jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Imagine someone in your community getting in their car, turning on the radio, and hearing the Liberty Radio Network. You can make that vision a reality with your own micro radio station. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how you can put our programs on the air in your area. You can have lrn.fm running around the clock, and you can even add in your own local shows. Building a radio station is simple, but programming isn't. That's where lrn.fm comes in. Learn more at broadcast.lrn.fm. That's broadcast.lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, June 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,282 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $605. Antiwar.com reports, with just hours remaining until the deadline for Ukraine to pay off its $1.95 billion gas debt, EU brokered talks with Russian officials have broken down and a shutdown of natural gas supplies seems inevitable. Russian natural gas company Gazprom has informed Ukraine that if the debt is not paid off, they would be moved to prepayment for future natural gas shipments beginning today. And Gazprom CEO Alexei Miller said that since Ukraine has not made any orders or prepayments, they won't get any gas at all. Ukrainian Energy Minister Yuri Prodan shrugged off questions about the shutoff, insisting Ukraine was fully prepared to manage without any import of natural gas from Russia, which provides the majority of the nation's energy. Ukraine's state-run gas importer Naftogaz seemed less comfortable with that and confirmed the EU was pushing for a compromise price somewhere between $300 and $385 for the gas. Ukraine has asked for a price of $268 per 1,000 cubic meters, while Russia offered $385. Gazprom has originally sought to charge $485 in line with what they charged the rest of Europe. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports British Prime Minister Tony Blair said on Sunday it was profoundly wrong to think that the 2003 Anglo-US invasion of Iraq helped stoke the current crisis and urged the West to take targeted military action. In comments likely to anger his detractors at home and abroad who believe his decision to intervene militarily in Iraq and Afghanistan made things worse, Blair told British TV that the Iraq crisis would have happened regardless of his actions. Blair told Sky News, you can carry on debating about whether it was right or wrong what we did in 2003, but whatever had been done, you were always going to have problems of deep instability in the region and in Iraq. If Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein had not been toppled by US and British troops, his government would have been caught up in the same Arab Spring uprisings that later shook the region and now be embroiled in a bloody Syrian-style war, according to Blair. 
Blair spoke out as an offensive by insurgents that threatens to dismember Iraq seemed too slow after days of lightning advances as government forces regained some territory in counterattacks, easing pressure on the Shiite-led government in Baghdad. Blair, who heads a global political consultancy business, said the West would be pulled into the Iraq crisis whether it liked it or not. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, with Iraqi ground forces fleeing faster than the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria forces advance, the military is increasingly relying on airstrikes to try to slow the ISIS takeover. That's got Iraqi warplanes pounding Iraqi cities, or at least what were once Iraqi cities, and large numbers of civilians are fleeing those captured towns to escape both the Al-Qaeda forces within and the airstrikes looming overhead. Mosul saw a big exodus when the city first fell, and Kurdish Peshmerga forces are reporting another large surge since the most recent airstrikes, fleeing into the Kurdish territory by way of Kirkuk, while the region's Shiite majority fled quickly in the face of light likely execution by ISIS, most of the weekend's refugees were reportedly Sunnis, some unhappy with their new rulers, and others simply seeking to get out of the way of the airstrikes. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Everyone in Painton is talking about it. Something smells like weed in that back part of the library. Head librarian Cookie Stevens and library volunteers Margaret Mosier and Gail Fredericks were in the middle of discussing the upcoming used book sale aganza when they smelled something strange. So Gail, but Dad, you smelled in. marijuana somewhere mm -hmm. and we're yes. like shocked. Yeah. And so Doug goes, do you smell it? Without any way to confirm that the smell was indeed weed, Cookie Stevens called her husband Sheriff Stevens, who called in local ceramics teacher Dutch Gibbs, who lived in Seattle for a few months in the 70s. Yeah, that's weed. Sheriff Stevens has begun compiling a list of potential suspects, including that boy Lance who has girl hair and hangs out down by the quarry, Greg Fromke, who was spotted this evening really going to town on some potato skins at Steaky Jake's Steakhouse, and Mr. Thompson. Luckily, one young reading enthusiast seemed unperturbed by the illicit smell. Yeah, I, I don't smell anything. I, I really, really, really love the library. The weed smell comes on the heels of last month's discovery of a gigantic pair of women's underpants in the children's fiction section. According to Stevens, that case remains open as well. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. As we are preparing for what is going to be an exciting week leading up to the Porcupine Freedom Festival coming up on Sunday. So the countdown has begun. We are uh, less than a week away from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We'll tell you more about that coming up here later on tonight. Also, Mark and myself are going to be going out to New York City later on this week. And that'll that's always fun. We're going to schmooze it up with the radio big wigs. And uh, so it's going to be a pretty whirlwind week here on Free Talk Live. But we will continue bringing you the live content, and you can continue bringing us your thoughts toll-free here at 855-453. Join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's start with Dave in Nevada. Right out the gate here, Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Do we have Dave in? His, he's muted. That's why. Hello? Go ahead, Dave. We got you now. Did you guys mute me again? <laughs> Somebody else did. It wasn't me this time. Okay, sure. No, kidding. Pass the buck, um, Ian. Yeah. So I had um, started a little online, you know, radio show. I had talked about it once because I had uh, I interviewed Daryl once, but I have a, you know, co-host different nights. And one of my co-hosts is also a friend. I had posted some stuff on Facebook after the Las Vegas uh, police officers were killed. Um, it wasn't anything like threats or anything like that, but he, I guess, had a, a similar opinion uh, of Chris Cantwell, where he said, you know, they deserve it and they're mm. occupiers and stuff like that, um, but nothing, you know, that would constitute a threat. And he was visited by the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Terrorism Center. Uh, some people might know them as a fusion center here oh. in Las Vegas. 
uh, to actually question him about that. Um, they didn't get charged with anything. They even told him that, you know, well, based on what you said, you know, you didn't make any threats, so we can't do anything. Um, so I, I don't even understand the purpose of why. It sounds like an intimidation you know, tactic to me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. That they, they wanted to. Uh, they brought, you know, they oh, well, hold had, on. You said they sorry, brought him ahead. in or they came to see him? Well, they had come to see him, um, and he wasn't there, but he got a message that they were looking for him. And I guess when they had come, uh, they brought, like, five officers to the door and had some in the backyard. They went to his Whoa. sister's house, I think, and his father's house. So he heard they were looking for him, so he was smart about it. He got his lawyer, and then, you know, they contacted them and said, oh, you know, I heard you were looking for us or, or whatever. So um, they probably, you know, weren't pre- – prepared for that it might have been they they thought you know he wouldn't be with there with a lawyer so they could you know harass him and, and of course you know um a lot more than than they you know than what they ended up doing but they did say that he could be held liable if someone did something as a result of his post well, which uh, you know sounds nuts well i don't know that's it, i think that might be a true statement but it'd be difficult to prove like for instance in the radio business if i were to say i'd like to see some uh, some some radicals in las vegas nevada rise up against the metro police and put a few of their heads on stakes right and then for whatever reason that happened well I think that they can, you know, the more specific it is, the more it like yeah, it that that specific scenario it is, the more likely it could could be that it could be proved. I don't want and that that's to happen. Specific, say, though, that what you're happen. saying. What's that? I mean, when he, it, what, what Mark was saying is, you know, very specific. I mean, it was just, you know, more along the lines as, oh, they deserve it, whatever. But that then that's getting into some crazy territory because then it's like, well, you know, people that say, well, I did this because I was inspired by a movie or because of whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it's one, of course, yeah, it's hard to prove. And, and if you say something very specific, that's one thing. But it just the whole thing is seems totally, you know, intimidation and they scare people. And then they probably know, OK, well, you know, he's friends with other people who, you know, come out. Not yeah, they'll to talk. say things exactly like that, but exactly like they'll tell, you know, people like me and, and other people. Not that I agree with the statements because I don't. However, you know, I do my little internet thing and, and, you know, speak out against the government and against the police. Um, so, and he's friends with other people that, that do the same. So it seems like, you know, just total intimidation and, you know, trying to scare him because it's, it's pretty, you know, yeah. from what he would tell me, you know, he was pretty nervous after it. He didn't want to talk about it. You know, initially he was like, well, let me think about it, if I even want to talk about this at all, because, you know, he's scared of what repercussions there will be. I mean, and how long do you know how long it was Facebook. between when he posted the statements to Facebook and when they showed up? It was like a day because mm-hmm. I know it was Monday or late Sunday night because it had happened that Sunday, and I, and it was you know late Sunday night Monday, and then they had. The first time they they came was that Tuesday. Gotcha, so Dave. Thanks for giving us the quick. heads up on that. It's a it's a crazy story, and uh, appreciate thanks, hearing guys. from you tonight. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. You can share your thoughts on this. Of course, the Las Vegas shootings last week involving the the couple that uh, allegedly shot to death two police and then shot somebody else in a Walmart apparently before killing themselves. And that resulted in a large conversation that we had about violence and how it is that that doesn't solve problems. And it turns out that apparently these this couple had some links to Adam Kokesh uh, when people were looking at their various different Facebook pages and mm. uh, one link well, to Larkin Rose. And these uh, Larkin is, of course, known as somebody who is on the side of violence as a solution. He's spoken about it a number of times. He wrote a very... A uh, controversial article over at copblock.org. Now, copblock has distanced themselves from Chris Cantwell, who's another uh, author who advocates for violence as I a think solution. That did you read the Larkin Rose article? Because there's this, there's a bit of a there, when to shoot a cop. You mean that one? Yes. Yes. And when did he say? I don't recall. It's been a while yeah, since I've read it. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you're in imminent threat of loss of life. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to there. Um, I mean— I, are there rogue cops? Sure, there are. Larkin Rose takes a, a, a more measured uh, um, opinion on when the, he doesn't believe that violence is going to solve a problem, right? Like a, a I don't revolution know what he is going to happen. 
All right. about that. As much as I don't support the feds snooping around into people's private lives and chilling free speech like it seems like what happened in this case, I do wonder if there's a place for investigations of this type. I mean, it seems like overkill in this situation, mm-hmm. but... The feds are right to investigate people who promote violence. If there's one thing that they ought to be doing, that is one of them. That's one of their jobs that it would be worth protecting, right? I suppose if that's all they were focusing their time on was actual violent people, then they would there wouldn't be as much to object to about what they do. Of course, in some cases, we, we've certainly seen there was the guy from Keene, New Hampshire, who got in trouble with some of his buddies during the, was it the NATO summit or something like that? for G20 having or something like that. Supposedly yeah. having a bomb, but he didn't have a bomb, or I don't know, I don't remember all the details there, but sometimes they'll they'll sort of gin up the violence as well, or they'll make it appear as though someone was more violent than they Mm. actually were. That's the real danger here. Um, I mean, is this a chill, chilling on free speech? Yep, it is. Um, But consider what speech was spoken. And I, you know, that's... This is one of the reasons why I don't think this stuff works. What the, stuff? The, the whole, violent stuff? You know, the whole violence thing. Yeah, we're going gonna to have ourselves a second American revolution. Well, one thing you can, you can definitely uh, take home from this encounter uh, is that if you are talking about violence, that's a surefire way to get yourself investigated. That's a surefire way to have a federal agent or local, local cop placed on your case and then you know maybe they'll be digging through your emails or who knows what other kind of info they'll have access to or bring the nsa in and start to snoop around on you even further so i think that nothing good can come from talking about those things and i think that of course not not only can nothing good come from talking about it in that they the feds might investigate you harass you maybe frame you for something who knows uh but also I don't think anything good can come personally. When you talk about violence, when you focus on violence, then I think that does something to you internally. I think that uh, it, it really removes something human-like from you over over time. Well, not it enrages you. <laughs> That's yeah. no well, doubt. I think it's a false answer to use violence to solve these problems. You know, like a lot of people will say that's their logical, moral justification is, you know, they are in the moral high ground to use violence against these uh whoever they are the agents or whoever but i think it's an unwillingness to use creativity to Mm. and imagination to solve their problems it's more complex than just using force it's true we'll come back with more here in fact uh, adam kokesh one of the people who has been pointed to as a, a media influence on the two shooters in Vegas, he himself is facing 15 years in prison. We'll explain what has happened in his case, which we uh, you know, hadn't heard about. He was arrested last year, so we've got an update on that. More on the way here on Free Talk Live, 855-450, free. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. The latest on Adam Kokesh, he is, uh, things aren't looking too, uh, too good for him. We'll explain more about that here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show. Username there is lrn.fm. Do you need focus? Are you feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge when it counts. There's a lot going on at once in our lives these days, and it can be uh, it can be real easy to kind of let it go and lose track of things and get tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut, give you the focus you need, and help you get things done? There might be. Look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out modup.net, M-O-D-U-P dot net, and look into it for yourself. they got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. ModUp.net also is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You order with Bitcoins, you'll get a 33% discount at ModUp.net. And if you use code FTL, you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL at ModUp.net. And remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So do your research and check out ModUp.net. Get great service at a great price. ModUp.net, code FTL. Story from the Washington Post. We have had Adam Kokesh on the show a number of times in the past. I consider him a a great activist. Uh, He's a courageous guy who isn't afraid to stand up for what he believes in. Unfortunately, he made the mistake, in my opinion, of standing up in the wrong place, which was Washington, D.C., where he apparently went with a, a shotgun to some sort of, you know, public square. I don't remember what it was called. But he went to the Liberty Plaza. Liberty, Liberty Plaza, Plaza. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the ironically named uh, Liberty Plaza, where he had his liberty taken from him. Uh, actually, they didn't arrest him in this incident. He went there to do a protest, a one-man protest, which originally was supposed to be hundreds of people carrying weapons from Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia and marching into Washington, D.C. 
he decided to not go through with that particular event, which I thought was the right thing to do because it seemed like something that could explode into gunfire and innocent people being killed. Um, just knowing how the federal government agents and police can can behave towards an armed pack of men that the, are the funny part DC. is is that they'd be moving from. Uh, Virginia, where open carry is completely legal, yeah, and they're marching across a bridge into um, Washington D.C., where like guns are almost completely illegal, and they would just really be moving from one geographic area to the next, and you know, just sort of showing the uh, the ludicrousness of of many of these and the arbitrariness of of laws. Yeah, I mean, it was an interesting protest idea, but I thought it was a particularly dangerous one, and I'd spoken out against it at the time that uh, that had happened. So he ended up not going through with it. I forget the his official reason for, for not going through with it. Didn't he offer to tell people to go to their state capitals and do something? Well, he ended up changing his event to a uh, sort of a secessionist event where peop- where he encouraged people to go to their state capitals an open carry and announced that they were going to secede or something like it that. It also got somewhat derailed as some other activists planned an event the day prior. After hearing about Adam Kokesh's march, they decided to march with water guns and do a Toys for Tots donation oh. thing the day before, trying to take some of the steam out of his event, and I think it was a success in did that Did they regard. go forward with that? Yeah. The water, the, the water gun march did happen July 3rd, the day prior to this event. And uh, I think it did take some steam out of it because people who want to make the point about the Second Amendment can do that with toy guns. You can still make the point uh, without making people fearful. And they might still shoot you over a toy gun as well. well that was my concern with the uh, the gun protest was that the cops, are, you, I mean, all they need is an excuse to open fire. And in a lot of cases, we've seen where agents provocateur will insert themselves into a protest to give the police the excuse to commence a beatdown or open fire or whatever. So if you've got one guy in the crowd who's actually on the side of the police that does something stupid, or maybe one of the you know regular marchers would do sh- something stupid, you never know who's going to show up to these things. And so there's all these big questions, you know, who's who's going to show up and how crazy are they going to be? And then who's going to show up from the police's side and how crazy and uh, dangerous are they going to be? And just seemed like it was a powder keg. And so I'm glad that didn't end up happening. How, However, uh, he did go by himself unannounced and went to this Liberty Plaza at like five in the morning carrying a shotgun. Had his cameraman there recording it, so it was just him and his cameraman. This is Adam Kokesh we're talking about here. He recorded basically him making a 20-second statement about how next year they're going to march on the Capitol or march on the state state uh, state houses all around the country in secession, etc. And he racks the shotgun in the the 20-second or 30-second video. It sounded you know somewhere between vaguely and threatening you know like vaguely threatening and threatening when when he did the video like there was this underlying threat that there was going to be a violent revolution in a year um i mean i'm not saying that i think that he sort of danced around it was what he was um a- attempting to do but yeah. you know when it's talking about guns and you're dancing around the verbiage it's it's rough that's a it's it's not a good idea. Yeah, when you're doing activism, I think the best idea is to be clear about your message. And th- there was not clarity in this situation. Yeah, and I don't know how well thought out it was either. Uh, you know how much time they really put into thinking about how how they were going to handle that. Because ultimately, the arrest that came came later when. Um, and were you in town at that time, Derek J, or had you left? The Fortunately, area. I skipped town about a month before that. Uh, that is fortunate. So um, anyway, they had came to his house and raided his house, and he had tenants there, or he had roommates, etc. And mm-hmm. luckily, no one was hurt uh, in the raid. Just freedom was violated. They searched everything. They allegedly found drugs of varying sorts. They found guns of varying sorts. And of course, when you've got guns and drugs together in the same area, Arm that trafficking. tends to make things even worse as far as criminal charges. So it's my understanding he didn't actually get charged with a threat. He was charged for having a gun in Washington, D.C., in the D.C. case. And then in the uh, Virginia case, when they raided his house, he ended up getting weapons and drugs charges there. So he took a plea in the in the Maryland case and got time served. He ended up sitting in prison for 
a number of months last year while he was awaiting his trial on the D.C. case. So that was ironed out by November. That one was done. Then he has this Virginia case, which is the one that he apparently just took a plea on. The update from the Washington Post, gun rights activist Adam Kokesh was convicted of drug and gun charges Thursday in a Fairfax County court, did not contest the allegations, but he called the raid that led to his arrest political persecution. Kokesh is 32. He entered what's called an Alford plea in circuit court to two felonies relating to possession of hallucinogenic mushrooms while possessing a gun. We'll give you more information on what happened. You can share your thoughts as well. 855-450-FREE. I just don't think Washington, D.C. is the right place for an open carry protest or any kind of gun rights activism whatsoever. It seems like a a hopeless case. We'll, We'll come back with more here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever's on your mind. Just dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. The latest on Adam Kokesh and what he's facing as far as prison time for his gun protest in D.C. last year. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And you can join us on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. The premier uh, anti-war website on the Internet is run by libertarians. Well, if you're proud of that, like I am... It's time to do something about it because uh, between some government fines levied against antiwar.com a few years back and the death of some major donors, along with those who uh, panicked after the revelation that the FBI was mon- monitoring antiwar.com, they found themselves in a pretty tight spot. They cut staff over the past several years in half, and it's uh, spread the remaining staff quite thin. Right now, the top folks there, the top two uh, folks at antiwar.com, are foregoing salaries this summer. Now, <laughs> that shows their level of commitment to keeping the website going. And I'd ask you, what level of commitment do you have to keep antiwar.com going? You know, if you don't care about antiwar and you don't read it or whatever, consider going and taking a look at some of the incredible reporting that goes on over there at antiwar.com. But if you do read it, do like I did and uh, donate. Because I went and I donated some bitcoins. Now, you can donate whatever you want at antiwar.com slash donate. They'll take it. But they do prefer bitcoin. They call it the peace currency. So antiwar.com slash donate. Now's the time to do it. All right, let's go uh, to your phone calls. We're going to continue the Adam Kokesh discussion here in a little bit. First, I want to go to Rich Paul. He's calling us from jail. Rich, uh, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Thanks, Ian. Hey, good to have you here. Just for our listeners who don't know, uh, why are you in jail right now? Um, let's see. I'm in jail for violation of probation, and uh, the major uh, violation uh, comes from having uh, protected another uh, another activist and artist uh, out on the square uh, from an assault by four men using a stick, and they. Uh, so they're accusing me of being a felon in possession of a stick. And the original reason you were on probation is for selling cannabis. Uh, you were convicted That's of right. that in 2013. You spent the bulk of the year in jail. And now you're back in the Cheshire Spiritual Retreat, uh, the Keene Spiritual Retreat. As Sounds we like, like the chanting's getting rather loud there at the like, Spiritual yeah, Retreat. Turn it down a little bit here. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, <laughs> yeah, because it's not a spiritual retreat. <laughs> uh, so, Rich. It's a county jail. <laughs> yeah. Well, we like to call it the spiritual retreat because really I think it's, or at least some people like to call it that. I do. And I know, Rich, you actually, I think, were uh, the creator of the page on Facebook uh, for that. So, yes, I'm the Kin Spiritual Retreat page creator. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's something that I call it that because to me, if I'm going to go in there, I'm going to approach it from a, a perspective of being positive and trying to get as much out of the experience as I possibly can and have a positive experience if, if I can. And, and there's plenty of time to reflect. So, uh, that, that for me, uh, it was a positive thing. It really was. Now, Rich, I know that you had a tough time last time you were in there. You've, you struggle with depression. Uh, you medicate with cannabis for your depression, and that's part of the reason why you got a violation of the probation was uh, for not passing a drug test or two or admitting to smoking cannabis. So there were several reasons. And you had an update in your case? Um, yeah, I spoke to my attorney today. And uh, basically, our strategy is going to be to uh, to try to resolve uh, my probation, um, to terminate my probation when I when I get out of jail, which may uh, involve me doing spending more time in than I would have. But mm. I think in the long run, it's the right cause uh, or the right call. Um, and uh, so we're going to do that, and hopefully by the uh, by the 26th uh, or shortly thereafter, I'll be able to get all of my fines paid off, which will uh, make it easier to get 
a reasonable uh, plea bargain. Yeah, that um, did seem to be uh, something. Uh, one of the other reasons why that you were getting the violation was because you apparently hadn't paid any of the fines that they had issued, which were over three thousand dollars worth of fines in the case. And the government really is all about getting money in a lot of ways, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if that was one of their real key issues with you. Um, but you know, it's, it sounds pretty optimistic that you'd get all probation taken away because you had what three years of probation. Uh, yeah, I was sentenced to three years of probation. We're six months in now. And, you know, what it may be is that I end up agreeing to sit here for an additional six months um, or, you know, three to six months or something like that in exchange for getting off um, uh, you know, for terminating my probation. Meaning that when you, if you were to sit that six months afterwards, when you walk out of the jail, there would be no more probation. That would be the, the deal that may be put on the table, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what we're looking for. And we would also offer also to pay off the fines. And the thing is, I'm not going to st- stop smoking cannabis. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to go to uh, their chemical dependency treatment, which they want me to go to, because I'm not chemically dependent. Mm. That's not... Uh, the issue, and um, basically, in order to successfully complete that program, I would have to lie and say that I'm a marijuana right. addict, which is not only false but stupid. There's no such thing as a marijuana addict. Um, so this is interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. What would you say to people who are hearing you actually suggest you're willing to spend more time in jail? I mean, wh- why go to jail when you could be out on probation? What's the motivation there? Well, the the reason is um, there's a collection of reasons. One is when you're on probation, uh, you're very closely watched, and that makes it very easy to pick up additional charges. Um, so you could end up in much more trouble than you were in previously. Uh, it's very difficult to find a place to live when you're on probation because not only you but your roommates give up some of your Fourth Amendment protections right. against unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, probation is basically, as I, I see probation as a trap. Um, and so I just I don't want any part of it. It's, it's a setup to fail, and I don't need it. Yeah, it's, I've seen it happen so many times to guys. I mean, when I was in jail, so many people were in there. And, and Derek J., you may have had a similar experience when you were in as well. But so many of those guys were in there for violation of probation. And always, almost always, it was peaceful violations of probation. Nobody got in a fight. They were there for, you Missing know, a court date. A pee test or something like that. Or a court date miss Driving. or whatever. Some, some nonsense. Things that wouldn't even Sorry, go ahead. or would be undetectable if they weren't on probation in the first place. Yeah. So that's, that's the main reason for getting off. So a lot of this is going to get hashed out for you coming up uh, during the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Actually, in about 10 days, apparently on, a, on the 26th. You're going to be in court, and I hear, I've heard rumor that there might be a carpool or something going down from the Porcupine Freedom Festival to, uh, to go and bring some folks uh, there to hopefully show, show some support. So I know that there are some plans in the works for that. Hopefully it'll, uh, it'll pan out well, and, and I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe you'll get out of there at, at some point and, and no longer have probation. I really do hope for the best, but I don't know what to expect. I, really, I have no expectation about what this judge is going to do or what options he's uh, he's going to consider, but I appreciate the optimism. Yeah, and I don't really know uh, what's going to happen with this either. This is a part of the legal system, uh, the whole probation violation thing that I have never really experienced before. So if nothing else, by the end of this, I'll be able to talk knowledgeably about, you know, what probation means and what the burden of proof is for violation of probation and what kind of hearings are available and that kind of thing. So if if nothing else, it'll be a learning experience. Plus, I understand you've got Um, some uh, blog posts coming up at freekeen.com. You finally have acquired envelopes. When you get put into jail... (laughs) Uh, it takes a while to get your commissary account going, and and then you have to like usually you miss the first week because of when you get put in. They they only send the orders out once a week, and if you miss that, you know there's like usually it takes two weeks to have the ability to get yourself some you know toothpaste or you know whatever they don't give you by default. Obviously, they give you this crappy toothpaste uh, on you know, by default, but if you order it on the commissary. 
it's better and de deodorant and envelopes and paper and pencils. So you've been writing blog posts. You're now sending them out, and we're going to get those up at freekeen.com so people will be able to follow along there. Thank you, Rich, for the call here. I'm going to put you on hold. We'll talk to you in a moment. More on the way here with the Adam Kokesh situation coming up. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in the studio here tonight, it's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And uh, don't forget to go check out Derek J. at his show, 
Peace News Now. It happens live on Sunday and Tuesdays. And uh, you can go to lrn.fm to get the live show times. But you can also, of course, download uh, the audio form of the show. You can also watch it in video form live via YouTube and then watch it back later on, so long as YouTube doesn't yank the show, apparently. You've been having <laughs> trouble with copyright violations. Sometimes. On there. It's rare. But, uh, yeah, so it's free. So go and check out peacenewsnow.com. I, I think it's probably, probably one of the best shows on lrn.fm. Oh, cool. Thank if you. not the best. So. Keep up the good work, Derek J. We will continue with your calls and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Oh, oh, and don't miss the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's coming up in six days from now. Sunday, the 22nd, is the first day. A lot of people are showing up on Saturday, though, from what I understand. Uh, there are, of course, going to be people showing up all throughout the week. But last year, if last year was any indicator, there were so many people there on Monday last year. I'm expecting Sunday to be pretty packed. Uh, I guess we're going to find out as the Free State Project enters into its 11th year of the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's a great excuse to come to New Hampshire and meet the meet many of us uh, from the Liberty community here, many who have made the move, as we have. Derek J. moving from the Philly slash New Jersey area, Mark and myself coming from Florida, others from as far away as Russia. So it's a real inter- international movement, very exciting to be around people who love freedom. That's what the Free State Project is all about. Get liberty-loving people together, get them here, all in the same geographic area, and then see what happens. What sort of amazing activism will become possible? I know there are dozens of people apparently running for state rep this year. There are, and many have won in the past, by the way, so we're actually winning elections. Liberty-oriented people are winning elections in New Hampshire. That's not happening anywhere else. The civil disobedience here, has, has, has a, there's a long history of it. It's been spectacular. You'll get to meet many of the people you've heard about on this radio program and will be broadcasting live from Porkfest 2014 coming up starting Sunday. So if even if you can just come up for a day or two, come up for the day or two. It's worth the drive, whatever it takes to get to Porkfest 2014. Don't miss out. Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Ryan is listening in Utah. You're on Free Talk Live, Ryan. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, great. Uh, I just wanted to say a few things about the, the violence debate. Uh, sure. First of all, we're talking about life and death. People are dying. People are tor- being tortured. We have babies getting hit with concussion grenades. Uh, We have people being beat to death in the streets for a half hour, Uh, women being raped, children being raped, Um, and an overall situation of what I consider terrorism. If if the American uh, militarized uh, police and their behaviors are not terrorism, I don't think it exists. You, you, we got to get rid of the word because they terrorize a large part of the American public. Uh, the constant insistence on nonviolence, don't ever do violence, can't talk about violence, is a pathology of, of uh, the left normally. Um, and I'm not advocating violence right now, I, I, except for in cases of life and death, obviously. But... Um, I do think that we have to be able to talk about it and accept it as a tactic of self-defense. I, I think we should stop referring to uh, self-defense or changing the situation. When does it work as self-defense? Of, of era, well, let, let's talk about it as a tactic for self-defense. When does it work as self-defense? Well, if it's uh, being judged by 12 or being six feet under... That's clearly self-defense. So when you it, it, it works when you end up in prison. Uh, it, it is self-defense when you end up in prison. I know, I know that. I'm, I'm clear. I'm talking about. I'm trying to figure out when is it a good tactic to employ violence against law enforcement officers. You had talked about it, and I want to know when is it a good idea. When does self-defense work against law enforcement officers? Um, I could I can see that there's maybe um, you know a certain amount of show of force worked at the Bundy Ranch. I suppose. Um, I don't, yeah, but they were asking people to not show up with uh, open carried firearms. That that happened too, but I mean, there's certainly some pictures that came out of there that were just sort of you know bizarre and crazy that I I saw, or at least pictures from somewhere of something I don't know what, and I don't know you know there was 
Well, I saw I saw a what sniper. Is, what do you mean by bizarre? I saw a and crazy. sniper that looked like they had uh, government officials in his uh, crosshairs. Hmm. Um, I don't know where that picture was taken, but it certainly felt like it was at the Bundy Ranch. Okay. Um, and I don't know who said what about what and what led up to that. I have no clue. But I haven't seen it violence employed against law enforcement officers in too many circumstances where it comes down as successful as defending your own life, liberty, and property, where it's successful in you somehow stopping the uh, the growth of tyranny. I just want to know. How about you just walking away alive from the encounter? Yeah, okay, well, Show me the success. Okay, well, well, the, the Bundy Ranch is a, a perfect example, and I'll, I'll get back to that, but there's been other examples. There was a guy in Midland, Texas, who uh, killed one or more uh, police officers. Uh, a lot of people in the community rallied behind him, and what that did... Uh, Ryan, I gotta say, you've got a really bad uh, phone right now. I'm gonna put you just on hold here for a little bit. We'll see. Maybe we can get you on a better line, or maybe you can call in uh, on a on a second phone or something well, like that. Well, one thing about the Bundy Ranch is it ain't over till it's over. I don't know what the U United States federal government intends to do with Clive and Bundy and that ranch. But I got the impression that they kind of backed off for now. Yeah. Right? Like you know, we're a few weeks out from whatever happened and the government has long memories remember what happened with ed and elaine brown not that i know of that there was there there wasn't even really an armed standoff there with ed and L L uh, elaine brown's house Des it, describe what you mean by armed standoff there were ed people and elaine were armed and they had fr and friends there with arms did so they, uh, did, they, they did have some violent rhetoric though didn't they Quite a bit. You're yeah, talking like, about Ed come and Elaine here and Brown we'll who put were, you full of holes or something. Uh, who were being persecuted by the IRS, the federal government, for not paying taxes. They kind of holed up in their house in Plainfield, New Hampshire. Well, and we went there for a barbecue. We did. And we did. I, I mean, you know, they had backed off quite a ways. The the feds had backed off quite a ways from mm -hmm. that house to the point where you know <laughs> you and I and <laughs> the uh, the president GCN um, went out there. G Genesis Communications Network, our uh, syndicate, went out there and we had a barbecue. Well, well, does it have to be people pointing weapons across a, a certain distance in order for it to be a standoff? Or if you know the police are right around the corner and they're organizing to come raid you and you've got guns in your house and you're talking about how you're willing to use them, is that a standoff? I would say it, it is. I, I don't know what a standoff is or isn't. I'm not here to judge what that terminology means. What I'm trying to say is, is that don't think it's over until it really is over. I'm going to try to bring Ryan back on here. Uh, Ryan, are you with us? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You were saying Am something about a guy killed somebody, uh, some cops in Texas. Go ahead with that story. Yeah, and, and a lot of people in the community rallied behind him. There was a lot of uh, things going on. I, I, I got there after the fact. Didn't didn't get, catch the, the events. And what now, happened to the guy? Uh, but what, um, I believe... God, I don't even. I don't even remember. I, I think that they killed him. Yeah, Which usually you get killed. Him. I mean, if you're going to use violence against yeah, yeah. the police, you are typically not going to get out of it alive. And absolutely. so, I, absolutely, you're, what you're doing is is you're basically sacrificing yourself for the future. Like, like. But you're not doing uh, anything for the future. You're making things American. worse in the future. When you use violence that's against the, the police, that's the, that's they the use that as an excuse to expand the state. I, I, I don't think that's necessarily true, but here's, oh, yeah, it here's is. where I go back to Clive and that's where I go back to Clive and Bundy. If there was a a large enough group of people willing to sacrifice themselves or to get in the line of fire and it became known to the police that they couldn't keep doing what they're doing or someone was going to react. They're going to stop doing the things that they don't need to do. It's just brutality. No, they won't. They'll just because arm up with more they don't tanks. Want, they don't, I, I they just, don't want to die either. Well, I, hold on just a second. See, now, having done Most activism... Uh, having done activism here in New Hampshire, we're going on seven or eight years. We've had an opportunity to watch what, in fact, happens. Now, this is nonviolent activism. Nobody gets po guns pointed at them. But what you get to see is, is that when a tactic works, the other team then molds and shapes their tactics around your previous tactic. 
Derek J is sitting next to me. He smoked marijuana in a park with a bunch of people, and it worked. He then smer- smoked marijuana in that park a few weeks or months later and went to jail for it mm-hmm. because the police changed their tactics. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the call, Ryan. Appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I'd like to expound further on this topic here. It's Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is next. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Now is the time for new flooring in your home because Lumber Liquidators has every floor on sale with the end of quarter clearance sale on right now. Get huge savings on all flooring like quick click pre-finished hardwood for $169 a square foot, solid hand-scraped horizontal bamboo for $179, and this week and only get 8mm cherry laminate for just $0.69. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest to you. Special 24-month financing is available. But hurry, this end of quarter clearance sale ends Monday, June 30th. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, June 16th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,282.00. Silver open at $19.72, and Bitcoin is trading at $604. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com, or give them a call, 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. Support also comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, four weeks of nationwide travel while spending only Bitcoin. That's the goal of the stars of the Sovereign Living Reality Show as they set out to travel 4,400 miles while developing creative ways to avoid using the dollar. The Blush family, comprised of John Bush, Catherine Bleich, and their two children, will make their cross-country trip aboard their minivan, hosting five screenings of their reality show at stops across the way. Catherine says she's pleased to see that Bitcoin-friendly options have expanded over the course of a year. We were curious if we could actually do it, and we knew many resources were available now as opposed to last year when we traveled to Pork Fest. So I started doing some research. I discovered that we could buy food, we could buy gasoline, and we could buy hotel rooms with Bitcoin. So we decided to just jump in and give it a shot. The Blush family will document their travels through articles and daily live blogs. We are going to be live blogging the journey through Bitcoin Magazine, and we have purchased the URL uncoinventional.com. And that will be pointed directly at the live blog. You can follow us there. The Bitcoin-only trip begins the week of June 15th in Central Texas, winds its way into Lancaster, New Hampshire, the following week for the annual Porcupine Freedom Festival, and will come to an end in Kansas City over the July 4th weekend. 
Hayes County, Texas deputy shot and killed a dog after responding to an altercation between a property owner and a tenant in Dripping Springs late Saturday night. That word from KXAN News. In a press release, police say the dog acted aggressively and snarled at officers. Deputies say they ran into the front yard to escape the animal, but the dog advanced, prompting officers to shoot. Neither of the deputies had any injuries. Sources say the dog was a pit bull. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action. Join for free to gain community support and protection. Online, accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, June 16th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Four national trade organizations have sued the state of Vermont after it passed mandatory labeling on genetically modified foods last April. The Grocery Manufacturers Association, the Snack Food Association, International Dairy Foods Association, and the National Association of Manufacturers are claiming genetically engineered foods are safe and therefore don't need to be specifically labeled. Vermont is the first state to pass legislation requiring the labeling of GM foods. Expecting a fight from major food companies like Monsanto and DuPont, the state set aside $1.5 million in legal defense funds. The U.S. State Department announced Sunday they're evacuating some staff from its embassy in Iraq and beefing up security as the insurgent group ISIS continues to advance. That word from USA Today. The embassy, which employs many Americans, will remain open. The U.S. government issued a travel warning for the war-torn country, advising Americans to avoid all but essential travel to Iraq. Photos exposed on a militant website appeared to show mass figures of the Islamic State of Iraq executing Iraqi troops. An affirmative decision on how to respond to the situation has not yet been made by the Obama administration. On Friday, President Obama's visit to the Sioux Reservation was marked by demonstrations from activists and tribal leaders opposing the Keystone XL pipeline. President Obama spoke at the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation, making no mention of the controversial pipeline that would run through Sioux land. Activists with the Indigenous Environmental Network held a demonstration, some wearing traditional headdresses and multicolored outfits. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, online at BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, June 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. If you're just tuning in, a horrific accident, dozens are dead and hundreds more injured after the Coors Light party train crashed in Pratt, Kansas. The train was barreling through a field on its way to liven up a boring overheated barbecue when something went wrong. Partiers were thrown hundreds of feet from the train as the frost-powered locomotive careened through bystanders at its normal speed of over 27,000 miles per hour. Rescue crews are struggling to get close to the crash. The Rocky Mountain frost radiating from the downed silver bullet is flash freezing survivors' bodies as they try to escape the wreckage, and the OJ's hit song, Love Train, is looping at deafening levels. No word yet on the cause of the accident, but investigators are focusing now on the fact that the train weighs 400 million tons and was not on rails. Coors Light has released the following statement, quote, Coors Light regrets any loss of life caused by the Coors Light party train's raw, frosty power. Please continue to enjoy Coors Light. We'll have more on this story as it develops. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We had a guy call in last hour saying that his friend was paid a visit by some federal agents after having made some comments about violence on Facebook, about you know violence as a tactic. We had one of the advocates of violence call in at the very end of the last hour. To- he wasn't advocating violence. He was advocating talking about violence, I think is what he was trying to say. Well, I would say that's. Uh, I would say you're covering for him there, Mark. It sounded. I'm not to trying me, to cover for him. I'm only trying to be specific as to what's being said in the conversation. A- he was advocating people defend themselves against government agents. 
That, to me, is an advocacy of the use of violence in the instance of violence being used on you. And I understand the moral argument. I understand the, the idea that you're within your rights to defend yourself. And the, he said that you will, you will do that. You'll sacrifice yourself for the good of the future. Yeah, well, but I think that's why Mark is p- making the distinction, saying that he was just advocating talking about it because it sounds like he's just processing the, uh, these ideas and he's sort of thinking out loud and he wants okay. to share his thoughts with you. So maybe this is sort of an evolution of uh, ideology for him and this is where he's at right now. Right. And I don't feel like I'm covering for the guy. I asked him to give me specific instances where mm-hmm. violence worked as a tactic for dealing with law enforcement he didn't officers. Give you any. And he gave me one where the guy in Texas ended up getting killed. And, you know, in my book, that's not works, no. right? You know, like works means I walk away at the end of the day and I go home. And so no. I agree with you, Derek, that he's probably on a, con- a path, as we all are. And I used to be an advocate of violence as well. I used to get on the air and say things that I would never say. Uh, Where's your line? I remember us, uh, we would have conversations like that. Oh, Where's yeah. your line? <laughs> yeah, and talking about shooting DEA agents in California when they raid people's uh, marijuana shops and well, things like that. He was making the point that what the state does is terrorism. And I have, to, right. I have to agree. Yeah, it's hard to come up with the definition for terrorism that doesn't also include the actions of all nation states. Well, sure. I mean, the, the all you have to do is pull up the standard dictionary definition of terrorism, and it, it's all about using violence to achieve political and social goals right. basically but as a tactical move as mark pointed out there's just no uh there's no point in it because it's it's it, show us an example where it's actually enhanced freedom as you pointed out the, the state uses it and it's a reason to crack down even further and this is like it it takes a great deal of commitment to get enough people together, enough people with enough of a commitment to get together to use violence as a method to overthrow a government. Traditionally, that's how it's been done throughout history. But with the advent of communication, what we have found out, you know, like mass communication, newspapers, uh, radios, television, um, then we go to the internet and and the, the constant cable news thing. With the advent of, um, you know, better communication, what we're finding is, is that nonviolent strategies like strikes and sit-ins and, uh, you know, even just protests out in the square, the Jasmine Revolution in the Middle East – It had some effects. You can't deny that. And, you know, that was basically strikes and and protests. Can it happen? Yeah, it can. It can work. And it's a lot less of a commitment than picking up a gun and going to fight because people who pick up a gun, especially early on, know that they're going to be lying cold and dead in relatively short order. Well, I used to think like Ryan, that last caller who expressed Mm -hmm. his thoughts about violence. And to him, I say, keep the moral high ground and others who think like him, of course. And there are plenty of them. If you change your behaviors, people around you will change their behaviors. So don't stoop to their level. And you can instead rise above it and follow the golden rule. Remember that violence is the enemy and not the federal agents. One thing that uh, I found, Ian, is, is that we had the commitment to the cause of liberty enough to pick up and move our lives to New Hampshire mm. to see what moving 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to one place, one state specifically, was going to do. The people that want to talk about violence that haven't picked up and moved from the New Hampshire— I'm not saying I want a bunch of violent people in New Hampshire. What I want are a bunch of people that are committed. What I hear is a bunch of people who are not committed or they're crazy, one of the two. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to pick up a gun and end your life at the cost of your family— and your your life, what in the hell are you doing living where you're – I mean, you, you have a huge amount of commitment, or you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, those are your choices. If you haven't picked up and moved to New Hampshire, and you're willing to pick up a gun, you're crazy. You haven't exhausted your options, at least. The peaceful options. I tend to find that's the case with most of the people who talk about violence as a solution. We used to talk about it, Ian. Yes, that's right. You're crazy? But no, no, you didn't let me finish my statement. My statement was going to be that I tend to find that it's the case that these people are not willing to put anything on the line. 
that they talk a good game about their violence or what they want to, to see happen. Like the last caller was saying, if only enough people would do some <laughs> sort of violent thing to the state, then the, the, the idea being that, oh, well, right now there's not enough violence against the state. If you just raise the violence to a certain level, then the state agents will not want to come to work. And, you know, there may be some truth to that, but on the other hand, when the violence and the risk associated with the job of policing increases, is what you'll find out is while some people won't want to come to work, more psychopaths will be interested in coming mm. to work in that job because they'll know they're going to get to kick in some heads and everybody's going to look the other way and it won't be a problem. So I think that's going to be something that happens. But regardless... But you the, see what happened when, when a police officer gets shot. Every police officer for the surrounding yeah. three counties in you know three radial counties around, it converges yep. and the manhunt is on and the likelihood of you surviving that manhunt are very, is very, very slim. Slim. I mean, uh, oftentimes police, if they don't look forward to this, it looks a lot like they look forward to it, you know? Sure, I mean, there's, a, there's the a shirt, huge uh, reaction. How about that T-shirt out of the, what was it, the Democratic or Republican National Convention In from 08 or whenever it was with a with a cop with this terrible looking face uh, with a billy club in his hands and the, the shirt said something like, we get up early to beat the crowds. And I mean, it really just... It really is an indicator of what some of these people are like and how they feel and how excited they are to engage in violence against protesters and people like that. Everybody wants to participate in a battle. Well, many people want to participate in a battle where they're going to win handily. Mm. They don't want to be the casualty. And the fact is, is that police have <laughs> armored vehicles. They've got these MRAPs coming back from um, Iraq and from Afghanistan. They've got, uh, you know, they've got the weapons. They've got plenty of ammo. They've got everything. You got nothing. Well, which is one of the reasons why a lot of the advocates want to see more people step up. And, of course, they're not willing to lead the way. They just want other people to step up and engage in violence against the state. So somehow their fantasy of watching the state crumble due to its own tools, which, of course, are violence. The state uses violence. So the idea is you were suggesting, Derek J., you're lowering yourself to their level by returning violence with, with more violence. But ultimately, these are people who generally aren't taking any other risks. They're, uh, they're not out committing civil disobedience. Obedience. They're not doing any level of, I mean, I could be wrong, maybe some of them are, but uh, we're not hearing about it. Uh, a lot of the people who talk about violence are thinkers. They're people who sit and they think about scenarios, about what would happen if the police came to my house? What would happen if the police did this? What if I get pulled over? What, if, what am I going to do? And they, you know, they start to plan and prepare and buy body armor and buy guns and, you know, build bombs or whatever it is they're doing to prepare for these things. But they aren't willing to, like, not pay taxes to the IRS, to go to join the Free State Project, to move mm -hmm. to New Hampshire, to get involved in various forms of activism. It's like you're supposed to push them to this point, and then they're going to break and hope a bunch of other people are going to break at that same point, and then they're going to form some kind of a militia, and then they're going to put a stop to the state. I mean, it's all so pie in the sky. Well, well, and yeah, they're but, using their imaginations to dream up these scenarios, but if they would just for a moment use their imaginations to dream up some peaceful activism that hasn't been done before, there's plenty of creative activism that hasn't been done before. I think a lot of these people are putting themselves into a situation where they're responding to the aggressive cop that you described, and they're mm -hmm. saying, this is the stage, this is the play, and I'm going to play my part in it, rather than changing the script and writing their own play mm. and living that instead. Right. And you said it was a lack of creativity, and it really is a lack of creativity. Ian, you yes. said they were thinkers, and they're not thinkers. These two people that did what they did in Las Vegas, they shot two cops in a CC's pizza. What did they think was going to happen after that? They said this is the first day of the revolution or something like that. Looks like they were wrong. Toll-free numbers 855 They didn't think about crap. I meant the people who are sitting around fantasizing the same about type. violence. Well, I'd like to give our listeners more credit. 855-450-FREE. You can take control here on Free Talk Live and share your thoughts. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantumvibe.com from Big Head Press. 
The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks... Why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take your calls about anything. All you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Grab archives and more, all for free. Freetalklive.com. Expresscoin.com is the best choice for buying Bitcoin or Dogecoin. More easy, so fast, much legal. Wow, and expensive. Expresscoin. That's a reference to the Dogecoin um, and the uh, the sort of jokes that go along with it. Expresscoin.com still provide, prides themselves on their, their customer service, so much so that uh, the back end of their new website should allow them to give even more uh, focus on meeting your customer needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer by starting off at Expresscoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the new app, Expresscoin.com. All right, let's go to the phone calls here, your calls and thoughts. We've 
once again gotten on the topic of violence. Did this come up last week when you were here, Derek? Yes, Jay? it did. <laughs> I, just, I thought it did. I know it came up on Monday and Thursday and here we are again. It's something that's on people's minds. Yeah, it's uh, in the public consciousness. It is, and it's, you know, I'm glad that we get a chance to talk about it. And yes, you should be able to talk about violence as a possible method of self-defense and violence against the state because we have to talk through these issues. I'd rather people talk about it and maybe be persuaded than to keep it all inside and bottle it all up and ju- and then only just focus on the crazy violent fantasies and you know what's going to happen when they come to my house, you know that kind of thing. Uh, so feel free to join to the conversation here. 855 450 free. Let's go to Don. He's in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, listening to WNMT in Minnesota. Hey, uh, Don. Uh, hi. Yeah, I had a, I thought of a pretty good nonviolent way. I'm sure you guys have thought about it. I just haven't heard it. Um, we got enough people to say uh, around the 4th of July go and uh, change their W 4 forms to tax exempt for three months. You know, we could probably shut them down for a while, get them, uh, get the conversation going as maybe a few demands. Well, I support not paying taxes. I think that's a great uh, personal solution for more freedom in your life. Meaning- but even if you changed your W-4, right. that's a relatively small, um, you know, commitment as far as, uh, you know, the danger that well, might befall I, I you. What I was thinking is if we had enough people do it, right. they've got no income. It kind of shuts them down. Well, first of all, let me let me correct you. They have as much income as they want, which is well, why sure great, you, yeah. which is why what you do to your income taxes ultimately won't matter to what the federal government chooses to do. There are a lot of people who don't pay federal income tax on a, a yearly basis. Some out of protest, some not. But um, you know that doesn't matter. If all of a sudden half the people who do pay federal income tax stopped paying, all they'd have to do is turn on the printing presses and just print out more money. So ultimately, yeah, that. How would that work on the state level, though? They don't have good point. And that's uh, where they get their money too. Yeah, yeah most that's... most states do uh, yeah. get income tax also from that same uh, setup. Good point. Holding. I've never lived in a state where yeah. you actually pay income tax, so I've never had to deal with that personally. Oh. So that is that is true. The states can't print their own money, so that would put them in a in a difficult position. Of course, they'd probably just right. go beg the federal government to print yeah, them out. But at some least money. there would be the news story, and I think that yeah. that's it's worth what he's talking about. Um, so I support that. I think that it's good to not pay taxes. But the real reason to not pay taxes in my book is so you can help yourself and you can you know keep more money in your bank account and give more money to charity and and help people out in your own life that's to me the motivation i don't think the federal government's going to be affected by it but interesting point about state governments you guys have an income you must have an income tax there in minnesota oh yeah yeah I've, every place i've lived they've managed to uh, snap a good chunk of my check yeah what's the percentage do you know offhand of what they take there uh, I believe it's roughly 10%. Whoa! It's pretty steep here. It's, it's ridiculous, yeah. Wow. Hey, Don, is there a reason you recommend changing the W-2 forms to be tax-exempt rather than just doing it? I think you said well, W-4. Well, I was thinking if we got the W-4s, yeah, if you get enough people to do it and they don't have any money coming into the state, they have to uh, at least pay attention to what you're what you want, which for me would be no congressman or senator so pass a bill they haven't personally read i would love that i mean the the it's the um the downsized Downsized dc's DC's been doing that for trying to do that for years at the the federal level uh so don i like the idea and it's peaceful and uh and yeah there's risk involved and i think that risk is going to be necessary at some level to to achieve more liberty in our lifetime but i don't think you have to put your life on the line with uh, with violence so thanks for sharing that tonight anything else you want to get out well, not, not, not that you want to put on the radio. So, but <laughs> All I right, appreciate then. your time. And thank, thank you, you Don, for the call tonight. The toll free number is 855 450 free. As we continue, Ty is in Tennessee on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ty. Hey, have you guys ever heard of the People Power or EDSA revolution in the Philippines? No. Tell me about it. That was in uh, 1986. I believe you can find it on Wikipedia. Look up uh, EDSA or People Power. Uh, Ferdinand Marcos was in power. That from, much I know. I, yeah. And his wife I had think shoes. The late 60s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So from the late 60s until 1986, he lost an election and uh, he called for martial law and basically tried to keep himself in power. And all the Filipinos basically took to the streets. 
and he ended up having to leave the country. So they had a peaceful revolution right there to replace a dictator. It's a very fascinating story if you take a look. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that Manila is the uh, most population-dense city in the world. Wow. So when the Filipinos took to the streets, the EDSA is the major highway there. When they took to the streets, they ground that country to a halt. And effectively. But I mean, when we when it was tried here in the United States in the the form of the Occupy movement, and maybe a little bit before that in the form of the Tea Party movement, you know, like the the sides were so split that they just couldn't uh, see. You know, the the Republicans are complaining, oh look, the Democrats are pooping in the 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 parks. I mean, you know, it's it was just incredible to see them fighting amongst each other. You know, people just wanted change, and uh, you know, that's what it it just the, the infighting prevented it. Well, eventually they eventually they still got a corrupt government, but they got rid of a dictator. I mean, that right, government right. is patterned after the United States government, so <laughs> you can figure you know how it is. But the the real key story was that a lot of the things that incited that uh, peaceful revolution was not violence by the people, but violence by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, Corazon Aquino became the president, and her husband was assassinated uh, at the airport by pro Marcos people, and that was one of the things that lit you know, one of the matches that lit the powder keg that uh, started the whole thing. It's a real fascinating story if you go to Wikipedia and look up EDSA Revolution. Uh, there's some things that Americans can learn from there, but I think that America is too big and spread out for something like that to really happen and take hold. Uh, but uh, it worked over there because Manila is basically the lifeblood of that country, Manila and Cebu down south. And if you, uh, you know, everybody in, the, in Manila goes out and protests, they're, they're pretty much going to say what goes for that country. Interesting. Thank you for sharing the, uh, the story tonight, Ty. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-453. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three violence or creative solutions. In fact, when uh, it turns out if you use violence back against the state, you'll be made to look like the bad guy. Whereas if the state's the only side using violence, then it makes it more clear who the bad guys are, which of course is the state. More coming up here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. You can take control of Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Free Talk Live. They're the mafia. They function like the mafia. They think like the mafia. They hire people who think like the mafia. The only difference is they put on a front that there's something legitimate and legal and valid about all of it. Well, there's no Don um, in this particular mafia. The Don is uh, the, the majority of people who went out and voted and then put you know their, their new Don in place. And the, sometimes the Dons change and sometimes they don't. Incumbents are very difficult to unseat. And, and you know, they're, they're, but their henchmen stay in place the whole time. It, it, it's, it's, it's quite a sophisticated mob operation that they have. It is. Well, it's the have. mafia that is so successful and that has so brilliantly pulled the wool over people's eyes that they've actually gotten people to give them their children so the mafia can educate them into believing that they need the mafia. Right. We have free indoctrination camps. I mean, schools <laughs> for you to send your kids to. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others? Fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live here to take your calls about anything you want. Dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Speaking of being online, if you care about your privacy online, there are steps you will need to take to protect it. One of those steps I recommend is ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and it encrypts your online data. Everything leaving and entering your computer is encrypted by ProXPN software or their server, depending on which direction it's going. But either way, it will not be readable by your internet service provider. Right now, if you're not using ProXPN, the ISP you're using is likely keeping records of every website you visit and every search term you make for, in some cases, up to five years. So you can put a stop to that tonight by going to proxpn.com FTL and grabbing their software for Windows or Macintosh or iOS devices or even Android devices as well. Plus, Linux users, it's possible to get uh, ProXPN set up. You just have to email their support to, uh, staff and they will send you the instructions. It's a little bit more uh, involved, but not act- actually surprisingly simple for Linux. So uh, check out proxpn.com slash FTL and get started there. They've got a free account that'll let you just jump right in and give it a try and see what happens uh, and then you know see how it works for you. And it, of course, works well. The free account is bandwidth limited, however. So if you want to open up to unlimited bandwidth, you want to be, uh, be able to privately torrent and connect to different servers around the world, you will need to upgrade to their premium account for all of $5 per month when you use our discount code FTL20. The 20 stands for 20% off for the lifetime of the account. Again, that's code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. Go and get started there. You get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN, this is important, they don't keep records of your online surfing habits. So again, proxpn.com slash FTL. Use code FTL20. And when you buy the annual plan is when you get the price down to 5 bucks a month. So it's a great deal over at proxpn.com slash FTL. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix on the line in Illinois, I think it was. Uh, Liberty Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Great. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, I uh, just like a lot of people apparently lately, um, I guess the FBI wants to have a, a uh, discussion with me as well. Oh, my. How did you find this out? Um, apparently, they visited a friend of mine while he was at work Uh-oh. and had a nice little interview with him and... And he gave me their card, so 
I'm probably going to be setting up a uh, an interview with them within the next few days. Did, did your friend talk to, to him? Come to them first. Yeah. Yeah, he did. So, hold on. Um, I, the what's your uh, your attorney? You have an attorney, right? Nope. You're Why just gonna... would you want to go and talk to the FBI at all? Number one, but certainly without an attorney. Mm, I don't have the money to get one right now. I then I wouldn't call that telephone number. You have no obligation to call that telephone number. You have no obligation to show up that uh, that appointment. Um, you know, if nothing no, good no, can come out no, of it. No, no, no. If you don't have a lawyer. One should can be appointed for you. Uh, you have no reason to speak to these people unless they're charging you with a crime. Um, I I wouldn't speak well, to them. Well, if they're about not charging him with something, they can't appoint a lawyer. Send me a letter. Well, hold on. I understand, but that doesn't mean you talk to them, right? right. Like I only talk through my lawyer. I'm just if saying. If you want me to talk to you, appoint me a lawyer. Mm. If they want to appoint you a lawyer, they're gonna have to charge you so with something. Do you have any indication from this friend of yours as to what the subject of their approach was? Why did they come talk to him? Um, I guess they just wanted to interview him about me. And I, from what I understand from him, they want to interview me about someone else. Because apparently what they told him was that they that I have recently spoken to someone who was a known threat. Now, who that could be, I don't know. I call into all these different radio stations all the time, so mm -hmm. I talk to a lot of people. The FBI doesn't have the authority to make anyone answer questions. So even even if the agents have warrants, Liberty Phoenix, you still don't have to answer their question. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, look, man, uh, <laughs> this is hubris, okay? What you are experiencing right now is the prideful feeling that somehow you're going to play their game well enough that you beat them at their game. And their game is a game that they play every day, yeah. and you're going to lose. It didn't work And you know what me. losing looks like? Losing looks like the inside of a jail cell, remarkably like the inside of a jail cell. It didn't work for me when the state police came around asking questions. I, against my better judgment, went ahead and talked to them. And that was because I felt like, well, I hadn't done anything wrong in this uh, in the case that they were investigating, and I don't think I did anything wrong. And I don't know if that's going to help me or not in the long run, but uh, certainly talking to the police generally just means they're going to use whatever information they collect against you. That's kind of what I figured. Or against um, your friend but, in this case. If it is if it is a friend yeah. of yours who has said something that is supposedly inflammatory or whatever, uh, then you, know, you may end up throwing him under the bus without intending to do so. Yeah, this is important. Liberty Phoenix, if the FBI is talking to you or your friend, have you, have you heard of FBI COINTELPRO? Okay. I have. Okay, so, all right, you're familiar with uh, J. Edgar Hoover. He was uh, set up the program, quote, to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize activities of those organizations that he opposed. So it sounds like you've made the list, and uh, I wouldn't talk to those people. I guess I didn't have to wait for Snowden to release it after all. Release what? I missed it. The, uh, the list of all the people that... Oh, that, I see. Uh, yes. The database. No, that was Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald is going to release Greenwald. that. And I wonder what happened to that but story. Snowden's. Yeah. Well, right, but Snowden wasn't going to release it. He'd already given it to whatever Greenwald and gotcha. other companies. At any rate, to. I appreciate the uh, advice, guys. What um, are you going to do? Are you going to go? Are you going to cancel the appointment? I mean, where uh, were you going to go? Know. Their office? I don't know. I, should, I think I should cancel the appointment more than likely. Um, everyone in my house says not to. And yeah. I think it might come to the point where, you know, I think I might have to move out. I don't want to get, you know, if these people aren't willing to. Well, wait, you know, what, move out of Illinois move? or move out of your house? Um, or? Move out of Illinois, move out of the house. What's the difference, really? Well, you're not going to get off of the radar that way. Well, they're gonna. F no, if no, they no, want you that no, bad, they're gonna follow that, you wherever uh, they're, they're wherever you well, go. Well, it's not about me. I, I just don't want to bring, you know, have anything negative come to them. My housemates. You know? uh, I see. Oh, you get roommates. Okay, gotcha. Right, so yeah. the concern is, is that the uh, the roommates are like, whoa, whoa, you should go and talk to the FBI agents. No, they told him not to go. His no, roommates. that's not no, what no, I heard. They told me too. They told, oh, they they told to you go. too. Yes. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, the FBI Terrible wants to advice. talk to you, but you better go. Well, they yeah. <laughs> a they he isn't their main concern. And that B. <laughs> They don't have any experience in this. Plus, realm. wasn't there just a Supreme Court case that said something to the effect of if. Uh, if you are not at your house and somebody else consents to them coming in and searching, that your objection, even though it may have been noted in the past, will not matter. So ultimately, if you've got roommates who are likely to tell you to go talk to the FBI, they're also probably roommates who are likely to let the FBI into your home and poke around a bit. Yep. 
Uh, there's a resource that I want to recommend to you, Liberty Phoenix, and anyone else listening. It's from the Center for Constitutional Rights, and it's called If an Agent Knocks. It's something that I've used in the past to learn about the FBI and their tactics and how to deal with them or not deal with them. Mm-hmm. And so I recommend it to you as well. Great resource. And Agent Knox. I will definitely check that out. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if you're ready to leave Illinois, then I would recommend New Hampshire as a destination. I mean, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here in New Hampshire if any agent wanted to come knock on my door. I mean, when the state police did come here, there were folks that were here because, you know, I'm at the Keen Activist Center, basically, so there's always activists nearby. Um, you know, there was an activist that just bought the house across the street. So I know they're looking for roommates probably right now for that place. The more Liberty people we can get together in the same physical area, the faster a response will be. If we send out a Keen 411 mm-hmm. here, we've got a two-way radio network that we use as well. There are different ways to get in touch almost immediately or immediately with other activists here. And that means that they, if they're available, and the more activists we have, the more likely someone will be around, someone will be paying attention, someone will be available uh, to come and help, whether that help is to just show up and provide moral support, show up with a video camera, whatever the solution is. Having people nearby who care about freedom, I think, is the best protection against this sort of thing happening. And if it does actually happen, uh, then it's still the best protection to have people around. Also, considering now surveillance equipment, because uh, that can be inexpensive and a great way to protect your home from intruders. You may want to actually have a camera charged up and ready to roll in case, if you cancel this appointment, which you probably should do. I'd have uh, one running in my room at all times. Well, that can, well I, I've always got it with me. Yeah, I, that can grind a battery down, Mark, unless you know you Plug have it. Plug it in. It's in your uh, room. Then you're, then you're replacing memory cards constantly. I don't know if that's necessary. You don't need to... But thank you for the call I've tonight, a, Phoenix. Let us know what happens, and smart. thank you. More on the way here on Free Talk Live. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the AntMiner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced AntMiners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an AntMiner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The AntMiner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by AntMiners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. 
They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll-free about whatever you want to discuss. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, and we've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out there. Send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then it'll be easy for you to contact us on Skype from that point forward. Also, you can meet us in real life. Uh, of course, Porkfest is coming up next week, but in July... The 19th and 20th, we're going to be in Chicago, Mark and myself, broadcasting live from the North American Bitcoin Conference. It's the very first Bitcoin conference happening in the Midwest, from what I understand. And, of course, all the big name speakers, or many of them, will be out there, including Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, Charlie Lee from Litecoin. We've got uh, Peter Smith from Blockchain.info, as well as uh, Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, Brock Pierce of Investing in Digital Currency, and lots of great liberty-oriented speakers like Jeffrey Tucker, Kathy Reisenwitz, and Jeff Berwick from The Dollar Vigilante. So, very exciting-sounding conference. I'm looking forward to being there. BTCChicago.com. I've been to a few of the Bitcoin conferences, but I've not been to a North American Bitcoin conference yet. Because, Mark, you went to the one in Miami. Yeah. And that was the only one you've been to, right? Well, that's the only one that there's been prior to that. And it was a really amazing event. They expected maybe 500 people to show up. They had 2,500. Wow. Um, it was a great event. Uh, and fabulous. Chicago's an even bigger city than Miami. Yep. I, they gave me the opportunity to do some MCing there, and I really had a great time. So it was wonderful. So we're going to be there broadcasting live. You should come out if you are in the area. Make a trip up. It's going to be a, a blast. I always enjoy these Bitcoin conferences. We've been to a handful of them now. And it's a, it's a great crowd, really intelligent group of people and interesting conversations. July 19th and 20th, go get registered at btcchicago.com. And of course, you can pay in Bitcoin, btcchicago.com. We will see you there. Let's go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. We got Chris in or near Vegas. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, I thank you very much for taking my call. Yes, I hoped I might lend some sanity to your friend Freedom Phoenix that just called because he's obviously very mistaken about his perceptions about what his speaking with the federal authorities might result actually in. Okay, tell me more. Well, for one, I would suggest that anyone that's interested might Google Don't Talk to the Police on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There are many videos from competent attorneys and law professionals that will explain to him the dangers, hazards, and abject likelihood of incriminating oneself or their friends, whether they know so or not. Yeah, it's a terrible idea to talk to law enforcement officers without your attorney present, and your attorney will say, we don't talk unless they've charged us. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may be something that maybe he can help with some terrible crime. That's why he needs to get an attorney to be able to speak to them, but do not speak to them without an attorney present. Well, precisely. And there's a very insidious statute that's 
Title 18, United States Code, Section 1001, which is euphemistically termed lying to a federal agent. Mm -hmm. And it basically says if one was able to think, blink, or even contemplate speaking with a federal official, that anything that they think that they knew was true or thought was true or turned out not to be true later can be used against them as uh, being less than truthful with a federal agent. Not only that, um, but there's something that we learned that was really scary during the Rich Paul trial. When Remember Rich, who called in earlier the show, he went to jail for selling cannabis. Well, the FBI was involved in that investigation. And the reason why was because the FBI wanted to get Rich to turn over and, and start working for the government and help them infiltrate the, uh, the liberty movement here. But what we learned in the trial through testimony was that the FBI has a policy against recording their interviews. When they do an interview with somebody, they take notes – and that's it. It's like they're stuck in 1940 or something like that as far as, you know, their technology is concerned. Yeah. They have a policy against recording these things, which means that if they say that you said something, that's what they have. That's their testimony in court is their word. Oh, well, well, uh, Chris near Vegas told us blah, 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 blah. Even if you didn't tell them that, they can say you did. And then they can say, well, that was a lie. You're under arrest. And how do you prove that you didn't lie to them? How do you prove you didn't say what they said you said? They don't have any evidence of it. Well, you can't prove a negative, and that's the whole point. Yep. If you recall that Watergate situation with Nixon and his guys did not work so well because they had recordings which had missing and altered pieces, which the courts habitually do in a form of tampering with evidence or felony obstruction of justice. And the, I, I'm very close to this Bundy situation, and we had one individual who had heard some uh, improprietous conversation at the, end of, at the Bundy Ranch who wanted to go and speak to those individuals and asked me to come along. I, well, my first question was, why would you want to go talk to the, the FBI? And his idea was he wanted to protect the Bundys, at least he suggested. So I, I said, well, if you insist on going, I advise you against it, but I'll go along with you to have you a witness so and try to keep you out of trouble. So I went along, and um, absolutely they were trying to insinuate he was a sovereign citizen. Why was he coming for this evidence, and what did he know, and what made him think, and so on and so forth. And it had to do with some individuals uttering uh, expressions that indicated they might want to try to uh, – disassociate helicopters or planes from the air with 50 calibers, hmm. which is very troubling. And uh, and I can certainly understand some concern about uh, delusional, delusional uttering such a say, sir. But it did not work out well. He was trying and he was being over dramatic and trying to confess to them this and that. And he left frustrated. And after he left, he said, well, you were exactly right. Why did I even talk to these guys? <laughs> yep. Well, my point exactly. Right. And many I times myself, when dealing with law enforcement officers, they see the um, the target as sitting right in front of them. You think you're trying to be helpful, but they're like, well, it's <laughs> a bird in the hands. We're two in the bush. Oh, they're very, very tricky. They practice these questioning tactics that can ask you one question and with the express intent of getting you to reveal information on somebody else or yourself without even you being cognizant of what they're up to because yeah. they're very crafty. Yeah, and remember, I, they're allowed to lie to you. So you uh, can't lie to the feds, but they're trained to tell lies in order to get you to admit to something. Well, oh, yeah, practice, Chris, practice your what? buddy, you know, we arrested you two together uh, the other day in the car with the 20 pounds of pot in the back. Hey, man, he just gave you up. How about you just tell us what really happened? He just he just snitched well, on you. That's one of the most common lies that they'll tell. They'll split people up and then lie to them about what their buddies supposedly rolled on him about. And, of course, you know, your buddy might have kept his mouth shut, but they don't have to tell you the truth about that. Well, they're factually taught and practiced in the law of rhetoric which is termed one must lie in order to speak the truth, which is delusional in itself. That's from Jean-Paul Sartre. Hmm. And this is actually a very difficult and problematic with the legal community because they believe they have the special private legis, private law, that allows them the capacity to lie for anything that they deem to be necessary to accomplish their goal of incriminating and 
suppressing crime. It's true. Chris, anything else you want to share tonight? It's been a great call. Well, I will tell you that I called trying to report a horrific child abuse case of child sex gang rape and stuff in the Salt Lake City area. I guess my better judgment at the direction of the Department of Health and Human Services Inspector General, and they directed me to the FBI office there. And I expressed my concerns because they're related to the uh, group of law enforcement officials throughout the state and the judiciary and the law community. And I was immediately accused of being a constitutionalist mm-hmm. and a sovereign citizen. And I explained to him the word sovereign actually means so, means self, and reign. It's to self-regulate, rule, guide, or control, and reign your, over yourself. And so, really, you're supposed to be self-controlled and self-policing and take personal charge of your own actions, which is the whole concept of sovereignty. But under the constitutional provisions, we're supposed to be sovereigns without subjects and supposed to be self-controlled, self-regulating, and looking out for our neighbors and our families. And I wish more people thought like you did, Chris. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Good advice. You know, talking to these people, these government agents, whether it's the FBI or the local police, unless, you know, you, unless they're investigating a murder and, you know, you feel like you want to help them with their investigation, if they're actually after a real criminal, then maybe there'd be a reason to talk to them. Maybe. Boy, I'm really glad Chris was there in uh, the Bundy Ranch to help defuse this situation. Who knows mm-hmm. what could have happened if he didn't go and tell to his friend, tell him not to talk to the feds. Well, um, oftentimes, if you have information um, that might help the police, that's you contacting them. Whereas mm-hmm. when they contact you, rarely is there any good outcome for you or society. I mean, unless unless you are a dangerous individual, in which case I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. All right, hour number three is on the way here. We are going to come back around to the Adam Kokesh story. We haven't given you more on what's happening with him. He's facing a long time in prison for having a gun in Washington, D.C. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works. Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Crystal Park. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, June 16th, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. Disturbing photographs presumably released by the militant group Islamic State of Iraq 
and Syria or ISIS show the apparent executions of Iraqi security forces. These soldiers are seen lying face down in a ditch with ISIS soldiers pointing guns at them. A caption accompanying the photos claim as many as 1,700 soldiers had already been executed. Tal Afar is the latest Iraqi city to be seized by ISIS, which has steadily been advancing. Meantime, the U.S. is moving to relocate staff members and strengthen security at its embassy in Baghdad. Correspondent Martin DeCaro reports. Some embassy staff members have been temporarily moved elsewhere in Iraq and to Jordan, according to a statement released by the State Department. The Pentagon says a small number of military personnel are helping to keep State Department facilities safe in Baghdad, and one Democratic lawmaker says that's all American soldiers should be doing there. Here's New York Senator Charles Schumer at a news conference. We should have no troops on the ground, and we should not be getting into nation building or nation making. Much of the embassy staff will remain in place, and Americans traveling in the country are being encouraged to limit their travel to only certain parts of Iraq. I'm Martin DeCaro. President Barack Obama is deciding how best the U.S. can help Iraq without heavy military intervention. White House correspondent Mark Smith has the story. While the president has ruled out sending combat troops back to Iraq, top aides say he is considering options that include airstrikes using warplanes or unmanned drones, as well as beefed up surveillance and intelligence gathering. However, he's also made clear Nouri al-Maliki's government in Baghdad must help itself by cleaning up what had become an increasingly sectarian act. The U.S. has already taken some steps both in Baghdad and the Persian Gulf. National Security Correspondent Sargon Bagani has the details. Soldiers and Marines have been sent to the Baghdad Embassy as the State Department moved some personnel out. This is as dangerous as it gets. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers telling Fox News Sunday the insurgents are seasoned combat veterans on a mission, one dire enough that South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham said on CBS's Face the Nation it may be time for the U.S. to work with Iran. We need to all make sure Baghdad doesn't fall. As the president considers considers military options, the Pentagon has sent the aircraft carrier George H.W. Bush into the Persian Gulf. Sagar Magani, Washington. In other news, six people have died in a fast-moving fire that roared through a single-family home in New Jersey's largest city. Correspondent Julie Walker reports. Authorities say the blaze broke out at 4 a.m. in Newark. The fire soon spread to another residence, and both homes were destroyed. Anthony Ambrose, chief of detectives with the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, says the cause remains under investigation. Investigators from the Essex County Prosecutor's uh, Major Crimes Unit is at the scene. They're investigating, and there are six dead so far. Those six people were all in the first home that caught fire. Officials say everyone in the second home managed to escape safely. I'm Julie Walker. At least 48 people in Kenya have been killed after an attack launched by the Somali-based militant group Al-Shabaab on Sunday. The Kenyan National Disaster Operations Center said gunmen set two hotels ablaze. According to the Associated Press, they also reportedly attacked a bank and a police station. Correspondent Jason Straczewski reports the attack and response have brought up a lot of questions. This attack was carried out by several dozen men, and it went on for many hours. And lots of people in Kenya this morning have been saying that it underscores the fact that the security forces are not that strong. It took a long time for a response to bring an end to this horrific attack. In the wake of that deadly truck crash that left comedian Tracy Morgan severely injured, Senator Charles Schumer of New York wants tighter regulations on the trucking industry, including black boxes and insurance rate hikes. Correspondent Julie Walker reports. Senator Schumer is asking the DOT to speed up a requirement that truck drivers use electronic logging devices to keep track of driving hours and required breaks. With a black box in the cab of the truck, we'll know if the truck driver drove more than 11 hours. Schumer blames the Tracy Morgan crash on a truck driver that New Jersey prosecutors say had not slept in 24 hours. The comedian's friend was killed and the 30 rock star is still in the hospital recovering with several broken bones. Julie Walker, New York. And that's the news for... 
This is the Onion Week in Review. According to friends, colleagues, and complete strangers, anxiety-ridden man Timothy Gibula is rightly ashamed of every single thing he does, with mere acquaintances saying they're constantly judging Gibula at every moment, just as he suspects. Tim's the kind of guy who's forever second-guessing his behavior, as if everyone's constantly scrutinizing him, and he's completely correct. We all are. We can spend entire afternoons picking apart Tim's taste in clothing and his receding hairline. It's honestly all we do when he's not around. Anytime he uh, awkwardly says excuse me when he's waiting in line for milk or sugar, uh, anytime he fails to make eye contact with me when he asks me for the Wi-Fi password, not only do I notice these things, but I use them to judge him fundamentally as a human being. A three-alarm fire that tore through a family home in Newark, Delaware early Saturday morning tragically claimed a half sleeve of Oreo cookies that were trapped inside a cupboard. At the time of the blaze, the residence was occupied by Mike and Sheila Donlin, their three young children, and six delicious chocolate sandwich cookies, all half dozen of which perished in the intense heat and towering flames. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to share your thoughts with whatever's on your mind going here on Free Talk Live. With you tonight, it's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Feel free to get on the line with us about whatever you want to talk about. We've talked about violence. Our friend Rich Paul called in from jail with an update uh, the latest on Adam Kokesh. We scratched the surface of that story earlier tonight, and that ended up spawning another, yet another conversation about violence as a tactic because Adam Kokesh was arrested originally for racking a shotgun in Liberty Plaza in Washington, D.C. We'll tell you more about his case here in a moment, but go right to the phones first to start things out this hour. Someone calling named Dung Like Allah. You're on Free Talk Live. Peace be upon you, ministers. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, the closing of the libertarian mind. And I, I want to talk about how uh, Brian paints people with a broad brush. Okay, and first of all, you're like calling on people. Monday night to talk about a host uh -huh. who's not here. So I would like to request that you call on I Sunday call night. Him. You can talk to Brian then at that call time. Call to talk about anything you want. Call to talk about anything Yeah, but isn't it kind of cowardly to, to talk about somebody behind their back? I mean, he's not listening like to defend Brian himself did right last now. Night, like Brian did last night after Stephanie dumped my call and he went on a rant about me and saying things that I didn't say. Uh, may I quote him, please? Sure. Since this is Free Talk Live. He said, James is talking about how Islam wants to wipe Jews and Christians off the map. Well, the funny thing is I've never used the word Islam or Muslim on Free Talk Live except That's for in true. response to an allegation. Yes, it is. I've never used it except in response to an allegation on a anti-Muslim bigot, which, of course, is a, a smear that progressives like yourself like to use all the time. I know that I'm pro-war against terrorists. That makes me some kind of, like, evildoer in your world, but not in the world of most people that don't respect men in black, uh, planting the flag, a black flag, that is, in the middle of Mosul. So, um, Mark, I'd like to actually answer the question. You asked me last night before Brian butted in and said started talking about people that he did hang out with in Iraq that weren't anti-Jew. You know, the people that actually— I am lost. I have no about. idea what's going on right now. I know you're lost. I know. I know you're lost. You're not listening. Can either. you make it understandable for me? Question. I'm doing my best to listen, but you're jumping all over the place. Then tune in to Sunday night's program through the podcast like I do when I didn't, didn't have the re chance to listen to the rest of the show. Available on the front page of, of freetalklive.com. Right, but Thank I want you, you to make it understandable for me now because it's not right. It's not. I'm not. I don't have time Brian to go and listen to your to your Stephanie call on the Sunday night call. show. That's what he did. Tell you what, uh, James, I'm just going to put you on hold for a moment. So, what is he talking about? Essentially, there was a dispute over, um, uh, you know, the sort of the what's going on in the Middle East, and Brian's, um, you know, he's he's highly activated by his. Uh, time there in the Middle East as mm -hmm. a soldier, and it, it upsets him. But I think, you know, Wit's doing a reasonable job of reminding me of what occurred. Great, but I wasn't there, and most of our audience well, may not have been there either. We ask questions, and the thing is, is Wit often will jump in right before you finished yeah. asking the question. It sounds like people are talking over. And Wit, let's do our best to avoid overtalk, okay? All right, go ahead, Wit. Or James, rather. 
Yeah, those two are best not to call me by my nickname. My friends call me that. But you if you shall like to entertain me, then you can't. Oh, that's a good one, Mark. Uh-huh. And you're a minister? Okay, Mark. Uh, I know you're peaceful and loving dude, but I uh, and awesome as well. So, But what I would like to do if I were president of the United States, what I would do about those, uh, they're, they're fascists. They're murderers. They're not, they're not Muslims. The no, ISIS fascists. The ISIS terrorists, is that who we're talking about? Yes. Okay. They're not Islam. They're not. They're not Muslim to me. They're murderers. They're fanatics, and they're fascists. And they want to impose their worldview on anybody that wants to or believes in it or not. And if you don't want to agree with them, they don't have any problem with chopping you up and sending you to who they think is uh, their god, not my god. They claim that but, there was. Uh, uh, they killed seventeen hundred. God is not their god either. They claim that they killed 1,700 Iraqi soldiers um, over the, uh, the the last – well, I mean, I don't they know murdered. what – once you put on a, a uniform, you've murder. arrayed yourself against anybody who wishes to invade. I don't know. At that point, you're – I mean, I, I don't even know. Okay, re- resistance to ta- – like you said, resistance to tyrants is obedience to God, and okay. resistance to ISIS is obedience to God and is in good spirits with anybody in the Middle East that wants to live in a free state and then die. Hey, uh, James, bed. I'm not familiar well, what with – I wanted to say – So go on. Sorry, go on. Hey, James, I'm not familiar uh, with this well, issue. I wanted to answer the question. Why is this such okay. a big deal to you? Why is it a big deal that a bunch of terrorist fanatics took over a city of two million people? I'm not saying it's not a big deal, but why is it a big deal to you? Why is it a big deal? Uh, It should be a big deal to you too, Derek. But I know it's not because okay, just tell me why. And you just tell you why? Yeah. Because they are fanatics that want to spread their Islamo-fascism across the Middle East, and when you tolerate it in the in the micro, then it becomes a macro issue, like hmm. fascists so what's the, in the solution? Past did. Well, well, for the United right States now, wait, fascists. Wait, 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 wait. I want to hear I what the president of the United States of America, and I wasn't a pothead, a former pothead like the one we have in <laughs> Oval Office right now, and I didn't think that smoking a doobie and being introspective made me uh, insightful about the world affairs. And thought that everybody could just get along and go along and smoke pot and get along. Forward, like move that's forward. The solution in New Hampshire. The solution is to say to these militant mass murderers to take off your black capes, go crawl back in the caves that you came out of, and, or we're going to neutralize, incarcerate, or terminate every single one of your sorry sassafrases by military force. What black like capes? It works everywhere and anywhere, they, they, and anywhere it's done when we occupied Iraq. Who, I, I don't know who we is. wasn't going so, on. James, When we here's occupied what, Iraq, this stuff, I did not this stuff Iraq. was canceled out James, by force. Here's, here's a, something that's really important to me. Now, you claim to be a libertarian. Do I have I to pay... Stop joke. claiming... Do, do I have to pay for the military adventurism that you're advocating for? Military adventurism. Again, here are these hyperbolic. Well, there's uh, always. That's not an. It's a yes or no question. uh, I actually believe in a voluntary military. By the way, excellent. What I also wanted to say is the American Foreign Legion that I would send over there if I were president of the United States will be funded with private monies. And uh, why send other people? Would go over there on my orders. Would be going over there because they want to. Because there's unlike the two. Ridiculous callers yesterday that defended Saddam Hussein as if we created him. He was a mass murderer for 30 years, and nobody gave an F, Derek. Well, why well, order other people to fight? Are you fighting? Specifically, the United something States something government didn't care. Murder. All right, I'm putting him on hold. What was your question, Derek? Well, I just wonder when people say, if I were president, I would send a bunch of armies over here and go do that. Are you going to those places? Are you offering your assistance? I mean, I don't know about this issue. I don't know what's happening, but presumably he's staying where he is and saying that other people should do stuff. Oh, go ahead, James. Go, Derek. Derek, did you hear me say that if I were president of the United States, I would order a voluntary, and I know it would not be hard to get a voluntary American Foreign Legion to go I heard you there. say that, but what are you doing Does now? I have to go up there, too, and for, to be a legitimate uh, uh, use of mil- – what did you call You're it? You're not going to be president of the United uh, States, James, so what are you doing now? I'm arguing on behalf of military invention in Iraq like we did 
10 years ago. Oh, how that's courageous. Thanks Thank for the people. call. 855 450 free. It's real courageous to, to stand up for the American military, which it, is already all around die. the world. If he wants to uh, do it from a voluntary standpoint, he wants to pay people voluntarily, I'm for it. As far as I'm concerned. You should start fundraising then and get on it. That Well, it, it's, it wouldn't be the first war that uh, was voluntarily funded. The. Uh, uh, excuse me, um, Ireland independence, uh, Irish independence, um, the uh, the shoot. I'm 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 dropping the names off the top of my head. Greek Greece against the Armenians. The Armenians uh, funded themselves voluntarily. Mm -hmm. It's it's possible to do, and you know I do think that there are times in the course of human events when one has to pick up arms. Now, I don't know when that is. And yeah, I do think that one can defend other people as their agent. I'm fine with that. If Wit wants to do it voluntarily, that's fine James. by me. Fine, James, Wit, whatever, Moses, whatever name he wants to go by, it's fine by me. All right, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, Adam Kokesh picked up a gun in Washington, D.C., and now he may be going to prison for 15 years. We'll give you more on his story. Your call's welcome here at 855-450-FREE, and join us here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have on the site, including a mobile site. For those of you with a smartphone, just go to m, like mobile.freetalklive.com for access to live streams and more. Dodd-Frank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they're killing the mortgage industry. But the Mortgage Minute guy, Roger Schlesinger, has found some ways around these rules and organizations. Private loan sellers are competing directly against the U.S. government, and things look pretty good. Stated income loans are back. Um, so all you have to do is state your income, truthfully, of course, and they uh, will get you a loan. Rates are great. It's never been easier to get a loan. If you need to refinance or get cash out or buy a new home, whatever the reason is, call the Mortgage Minute Guy. Maybe you've already, um, you're already working with somebody, and that's great, but you need a second opinion. Call the Mortgage Minute Guy or go to MortgageMinuteGuy.com. The number is 866-288-0088, MortgageMinuteGuy.com, 866-288-0088. All right, let's go to the phones, and the phone Steve is calling from a state of misery. You're on Free Talk Live, Steve. <laughs> it's pronounced, pronounced Missouri. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, normally that's how I say it. Go ahead with your thoughts. But yeah, I just want to—I want to talk about this new uh, conflict in Iraq. Like, there is really no reason why we should be there. Well, I'm not there. And thank goodness. Are you there? Nope. <laughs> well, well, okay. I used to we. Um, you mean you mean the I United States think, federal I, government? You don't think they should be there? United and by the way. States is this the story, yeah. Derek J., that you had uh, brought in tonight? Sounds apparently, like it, yeah. Apparently there's going to be more troops going to Iraq, perhaps? Steve? I, I think the government said, or, well, Obama said that he was the innocent. Maybe airstrike. He said maybe. no, and then yes. Yeah, well, yeah. That's very confusing. Yeah, we don't know what he's going to do, but the point is, I don't like it. Like, hasn't anybody even, like, thought about this? Well, the idea of blowback. You know, Ron Paul really, like, put this out there and made it, you know, let people know, hey, you know, if somebody comes by your house every single day and they and they mess with you, eventually you're going to get mad, right? Well, isn't it possible they want blowback? I mean, the, the the federal government, they don't really care about protecting you. They care about aggregating power and, uh, and you know, to themselves and then rewarding their friends and punishing their enemies. Blowback for them is useful. I mean, it, to, to them, if, if they go and they kill a bunch of people in the Middle East and then those people get mad, as you're pointing out, as they will do. I mean, if you start murdering people's family and friends, somebody's going to get angry and do something about it. So somebody in the Middle East then does something about it. They blow something up over in the United States or start shooting people in or the United States. The Middle East. Then that just gives the government more reason to increase their control and their power. So to them, for their, from their perspective, blowback is desirable because it gives them the excuse to continue to control and increase their control. Well, it's just a, it's a constant. Um, it's just a, you're going to go over and over and over and and make it worse and worse. That's what they want, isn't it? I mean, why why would they want to protect you? Why would they want to stop the violence in the world? To them, violence is more power. I mean, what is it? Uh, War is the health of the state. That's an old quote. Randall Thorne, I think, uh, is famous for saying that one. I mean, they love war. Terrible. It is terrible. Why does this well, matter to what you? Do you think about that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Huh? Well, 
what do you think about this? I'm with like you the, 100%. I can't argue violence. with you in any way. Like, well, I like Derek's but, question. Yeah, most people don't care about this, and they just want to ignore it, watch Dancing with the Stars or mm-hmm. some t- TV or veg on some junk food. Well, you, you've got too much time for thinking. You, you're, why, why do you care about this yeah. issue? Why do I care? Because I care about everybody, man. I want everybody to be, like, in line and, and like, feel good about themselves and mm. not, yeah, use violence against each other. So this troubles that's, your conscience that's somehow? Yeah, sure. Yes, I like should. this guy. Totally. It's, it's a healthy <laughs> conscience. <laughs> yeah. Right on, Steve. I'm with you, man. I share the concerns. Um, I don't want to see more war, but unfortunately— the state is uh, seems to be an outgrowth of of the people's what what they think and what they believe, and I think people believe in the, the the idea of controlling others, and I think that's the that's where war comes from. Wow, I disagree with you, Ian. I think really? that there's only a small group of people who believe in war, and the rest just want nothing to do with it. Like most that's people, what I, I think most uh. people aren't like Steve, and they aren't willing to get let their consciences be bothered by what that small group of warlike people are doing. I disagree entirely. Um, I think that the the same it's the same mentality that says I like the Yankees or the Boston Red Sox or whatever is the one that purports um, to 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 like war. I mean, you know, you you can't say that patriotism is an uncommon quality, and patriotism is you know, it went, walks lockstep in. Um, in in line with supporting war. Yeah, Steve. but it's not the ideas of war that those patriots support. It's the emotional uh, support from their friends and family. They don't want to be an outsider. So Steve, they thank you for the popular. call tonight. I, what I wanted to say back to that, Derek J., and I get where you're coming from, and I, I can empathize with it completely, but yeah. I think the point where you're wrong is that what I was saying when I said people want to control others, I didn't mean they supported war necessarily overtly. Uh. I mean that inside humans there's a desire to control Hmm. and i think that manifests in its ultimate form it manifests in a lot of different ways like it can manifest in a family being abusive it can manifest in you know personal ways that we aren't we're not all privy to and war is like the most extreme example of that War is the ultimate example of humans desire to control other humans so yes it's certainly true that if you were to go interview people on the streets Many of them would tell you, oh, that's terrible. I don't support that war or whatever is happening in Iraq, and or I don't want to think about it or whatever. I think that's yeah, true. Yeah, I think on principle, on the issues, people don't support what the government does. That's true, but if you ask those people enough questions, you'll probably be able to unearth an issue or two on which they think they know the way people should behave mm. and that they are willing to impose upon them. So they don't support war. And of course, they would never admit to supporting violence in, in order to get people to do the things they want to, them to do. But a lot of people will still gum, come to the state and beg for the state to do things without connecting that to the violence that goes on. Mark, you've experienced this at your Quaker meetings where you'll talk to them about what the state is and how it's a monopoly on violence and how can you support this if you're a Quaker and it seems like a disconnect and well, they're disconnected. I, I don't push that far, right? Like I don't say, how could you be a Quaker and still I'm support summarizing the state? your perspective yeah, in the conversation. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know, essentially what the argue, counter argument is, is well, we don't consider that violence. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so people don't, when they look at the state in general, accepting war, you know, the state doing other things. Oh, we want to help the poor. We want to, you know, make pe- sick people healthy again. They don't see it as violence, and once you show them the violence, they don't want to see the violence. They close off to it. So I think that uh, that you're right and you're wrong. I guess what you're saying. <laughs> at the same right, time, I'll have to take it because I think people do want to control others, and if we didn't, as humans, have that desire, uh, then I don't think we would have the government that we have. It may be, um, but but it may be sort of an evolutionary trait that took that's what it took for us to get together in little bands, you know, to. To, to, to survive. Try being a you know a single lone human surviving in the wilderness, and you're not going to survive long. You may be right, and it's uh, high past time we evolve past this particular trade, if that's the case. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. You just dial on in right now. Join the conversation here. We'll continue with more about Adam Kokesh and why he's facing 15 years in prison. Coming up. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow. 
I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. Freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. We are inviting you to bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. 15 years in prison for racking a shotgun, not threatening anyone. Uh, Just making a video in Washington, D.C. That's what Adam Kokesh is facing. We'll tell you more about that when we get a moment. Uh, And your calls are certainly welcome. And by the way, we have Skype. You may Skype in at username lrn.fm. Go get a free pound of coffee. A free pound of coffee. Coffee that's 100% organic, shade-grown, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, go get? You don't have to leave your house to go anywhere to get BuzzBox coffee. You go to to coffee.freetalklive.com. That's as far as you need to go. Navigate on the web to coffee.freetalklive.com and uh, get a free pound of coffee. Also... Buzzbox Coffee, that's the, the brand that we're talking about here. They they work with partners like Free Talk Live to offer 
um, microloans to people around the world. For every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're able to offer another microloan to another family to give them a hand up uh, instead of a handout. And that, to me, is the only way people really work themselves out of poverty. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's uh, continue here. We've got Nathan on the line in Texas via Skype. And Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, hi. Derek, Jay. Hey. Um, so I thought I would apply the same methodology that I did in the jury nullification research to, to the uh, police lying thing. Because I thought, well, in jury nullification, I found lots of statements by courts that, oh, yeah, this is this is okay. So I thought if I searched for cases where they said, oh, yes, lying to uh, suspects is okay, then that would work. And I found one case, and uh, it's called Fraser v. Cup. It's a 1969 case where the Supreme Court basically said that it was okay to lie to a suspect about evidence that uh, incriminated him. That's all it takes. There's more than one, that case. I'm one sure. Supreme Court ruling. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it actually says the fact that the fact that the police misrepresented the statements that Rawls had made is, while relevant, insufficient in our view to make this otherwise voluntary confession inadmissible. Mm. Translation: They can lie. Yep. Um, but I didn't really find any other information. I mean, I found a lot of just kind of googling a little. I found information from lawyers, like people talking about how interrogation is really all about deception, whether it's emotional deception or um, hinting that you know more than you really know. Um, I couldn't really find any definite statement like, yes, uh, agents from the DEA are allowed to lie to you. Nothing really concrete like that. Well, if they're not prohibited from doing it, then they're allowed to do it, right? So uh, what's the crime? There is no crime. Well, because I was thinking of something like someone gets a conviction, like in this Frazier case, and then they challenge it, and then the court would say, oh, well, you can't challenge this because X, Y, Z. Uh, it's more of a customary thing. Like I got, I get, I'm getting the impression that because of this Frazier ruling, it set a kind of precedent where law enforcement can use deceptive tactics as long as they're not too deceptive. Apparently there they are They can be very where, deceptive. Like what would be too deceptive in your mind? Uh, well, I, I, I didn't, I forget which one it was, but it was one where like they use threats and promises and, uh, basically if the conditions are become coercive enough, then, uh, then they're not allowed. Well, what's like, not coercive was, about threatening jail time? Well, right. But, uh, I was more interested in the, in the deceit aspect. You mean if they're but, like going to beat or you break your hand or something like that, like bash your face in, that would yeah, be yeah. maybe crossing a line? Yeah, well, right, but that. if that's the case, then they're not going to need to lie to you, right? They're just going to use brute force. No, no, force they're just threats. lying about breaking your face. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Apparently, it's lying about. Uh, so apparently, just emotional, just lying about general things is fine. It's only there. There is a case here where lying about evidence made it made them throw the conviction out, but I didn't write it down. But uh, it is possible for them to lie too much. But I guess the moral here is that they they can lie about evidence which convicts you so some of their me. careers are based on uh lies like for instance today we were in court uh graham colson actually one of the activists in the Keene area had a case and we of course had to wait through every other case that was being called prior to graham because you whenever an activist comes up almost every time they want to clear the courtroom of all the regulars of all the average folks who are in there because they don't want them to see what happens during the activist trial and so one of the cases they were clearing out was a guy who was arrested on three counts of soliciting a prostitute. And this guy went on Craigslist. He posted an advertisement about how he wanted to hire someone to give him a BJ and that uh, he wanted to record that on video. Now, apparently, he was responded to on Craigslist by Officer, I think his first name is James, I could be wrong, but yep. McLaughlin. And he's an older man who works for the Keene Police Department, a detective with the Keene Police Department. He is basically their cyber crimes unit. And he makes a living off of pretending as though he is a young person online who is very, very horny and willing to do things, in this case, for money. Um, he's uh, He pretended to be a 20-year-old college student at Keene State College. He uh, told this person that he would be willing to meet. And I have not reviewed the logs, but I suspect that uh, he convinced this individual who was, again, wanting to hire someone for what sounds like an act of pornography, he wants to record a sex act Which and, is pay, legal in and New pay money for it. But the thing that's not legal in New Hampshire is to record a sex act, pay money for it, and not intend to distribute it. 
So or not intend to sell it. And apparently he admitted that the guy who was uh, wanting to hire the person to do the sex act, he admitted to the officer in some sort of a chat or over, you know, Craigslist chat or whatever it's called messaging that he would not be selling the video. So basically that's how they got him. Had he refused to say that he wouldn't sell the video or wouldn't even try, because it's, it's about your intention, apparently. Hmm. If it's your intention to sell the video of the sex act, then it's pornography. But if it's not your intention, if it's your intention to keep it for your personal collection, then it is a, uh, a, a hiring of a prostitute. And so, uh, so that police officer, his full job description is to d- engage in deceit on a day Daily basis, wherein he pretends to be someone he is not, which of course is also the job of a drug uh, undercover officer, also pretending to be someone that they're not. So in many cases, officers from the, the start of their working day are telling lies for a living, not just getting convictions, but just from top to bottom. It's sick. Thanks, oh, yeah, Nathan. And it, Go ahead. It's good, you, it's good you point that out because I remember the case now where they said the evidence was too much of a liar or too much deceit. It involves something like the police officer like pretended that he had the bloody glove that implicates you or like he actually constructed fake physical evidence. And that was uh, oh, the court. Oh, interesting. Uh, the, yeah, so the court, and I don't have it, I don't have the citation, but I, I remember it. That that was, well, that's that was that's interesting. To, to construct fake evidence would be a problem, but to not tell some, or to, apparently to tell someone that their buddies rolled over on them. That's which, fake evidence. That seems like fake evidence to me. That's a common police tactic, and it's it's widely accepted and utilized. It's trained, as a matter of fact. So I wonder well, where they do, that, where they draw that that's line. That's one part. Sorry, go ahead. I said I wonder where they draw that line. Is it only physical evidence that uh, you know that the manufacturing that is that the is that the problem? Is that where they draw the line? Apparently, it's it's really subjective. But yeah, that was the other thing that I'm not too sure about is that like actually being trained and told to lie. I mean, there are a lot of people who say this and, you know, you guys have your experience. And um, I mean, that might be true. It's just kind of hard to I mean, that's going to be really hard to prove to find, you know, a police like trainer who just says, you yes, think I so? train all my guys. I, I, I don't oh, know. I don't I think it'd be that hard to, to find that. We've had police trainer on the show in the past. We've had former oh, cops. Oh, he said that? I don't remember if he said that specifically, but we've had former cops on the program. It's it's fairly well known that the police are trained to lie. It's completely legal for them to lie in order to get convictions, in order to get you to reveal information to them. Thank you for the call tonight, Nathan. That's my understanding of it, at least. If anybody wants to disagree, feel free to call in and uh, share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Even if it wasn't um, part of the training, and I couldn't tell you whether it was or whether it is or not, um, it's probably it's part of the culture um yeah. you somebody know. <laughs> tells them at some point hey separate those two and then tell them they both rolled over on one another and see what they say it's clearly fraud what they're doing uh, sure. by, by lying and then they call it a voluntary confession right. after after someone's been defrauded to believe something that's clearly not true I, I It'd be fraud if you or I did it, but not when they do it. Well, it has a chilling effect, at least the case that you mentioned, on consensual sexual interactions and, and who knows what else because of these threats by police. It's true. This guy got, uh, he paid the girl $150, or would have paid the girl. There never was a girl. I'm sorry. It was the cop. He he had agreed to pay her $150 to meet him in a the back seat of his car in a some fast food parking lot. I mean, what's wrong with that? It's his business and her business if she was real. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. 
And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. The chimpanzee spends most of its day in the jungle, carelessly swinging from tree to tree, and picking mites off itself, instead of building shelter and teaching itself how to read. This chimp is named Bolo, and researchers at Duke University have shown that he can solve three-dimensional logic puzzles, an impressive feat indeed, until you learn that human children as young as three are also able to solve the puzzle. Even a mentally handicapped human is capable of verbal speech, something no chimpanzee has ever been able to accomplish, despite working vocal cords capable of howling in irritation after soiling itself. Chimps have been observed using tools, but their tools are little more than sticks. Even driving and preparing pancakes, tasks we leave to the stupidest, least educated humans, lay beyond the capabilities of the chimp. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free here. In the remaining moments, there's just enough time for your call and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J's here, courtesy of his website, peacenewsnow.com. That's his new thing. His old thing was victimless crime spree. That's uh, one of the the media, uh, one of the few pieces of long-form media in, in video form that has ever come out of New Hampshire. It was, I believe, the, f- the very first, and it certainly won't be the last, but the very first Free State Project member or pr- a participant produced, edited, directed, film, a documentary film about the, a lot of the activism that happened up here back in, uh, I guess it was 2011 to 2012 when you had first made the move up here, Derek J. That's right. It was an exciting time about my move to New Hampshire, and I don't regret a single thing, though I had to leave. I had some court battles. I had jail experiences. All of that is at VictimlessCrimesPree.com. And it's free to watch online at VictimlessCrimesPree.com, so go and check that out. I will be bringing some to the Porcupine Freedom Festival I don't have a table or anything to sell them uh, from. But what I actually did last year was there were different uh, kind of vendors who were willing to accept basically consignment items. So I left a few of them at one booth and a few of them at another booth so people could go and buy Victimless Crime Spree on DVD. And I didn't have to spend any time selling it. It was great. That's so cool. Yeah. And it was available from multiple uh, vendors at different price points at Porkfest. So if you shopped around, you could find a cheaper one. And it sort of goes with the philosophy of how the movie was distributed, too, because there are also torrents that people can down- yes. you know, they can download the movie for free. And they can make DVDs and sell them themselves if they want to. We even have a peg access version, uh, public 
and a public what do they call it? Uh, I forget what public entertainment. I don't know. Anyway, the the cable access channels. We got a version just for cable access TV as well, which you can download at victimlesscrimespree.com and, and just, then give it to your table cable access yeah, company. Yeah, put it on yeah. the air on cable access. I see. Yeah, so all spread kinds these of ideas. Right. That way, people will see it who you don't know. Because it's nice to be able to share it with people you do know. Right. That's great. Please do that. But uh, cable access is a good way to reach a new audience that would never have otherwise heard about Victimless Crime Spree. So go to victimlesscrimespree.com. All right. So. Uh, Adam Kokesh definitely committed a victimless crime. He went into Washington, D.C. at Liberty Plaza. He racked a shotgun on video. It was like a 30-second long thing where he talked about a revolution going to happen next year or something like that. Yes. By the way, I guess it's about time for that to happen, so we'll see if that pans out. Uh, Because it's been about a year since that happened with Mm -hmm. Adam Kokesh. I don't expect that it will. At this point, he has entered what's called an Alford plea. Because what happened after he racked a shotgun was not too long later. He had his house raided by D.C. and uh, federal and Virginia police, as I understand it. The Virginia folks charged him with gun and drug possession. The feds charged him with the gun in D.C. situation. He took a plea on the gun in D.C., served time served, which was several months in jail. And now he has taken what is called an Alford plea. And that means that the defendant doesn't admit guilt, but acknowledges that prosecutors have enough evidence to obtain a conviction. Now, I'm not really sure why he would want to take this plea, because it doesn't seem like it has a time, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a deal attached to it. Like, if you're going to take a plea... You should have a deal attached to the plea. Here, in this case, it says he faces a maximum of 15 years in prison when he's sentenced in September. So what's the motivation to take the Alfred plea? There must be something. I don't know much about it. I've maybe heard about it once in the past. Well, how Why? do you know there wasn't a deal that was made off the books? Maybe you're right. Maybe That's there what is I'm, something I'm like that. speculating here. So different jurisdictions, different states have different rules. Mm-hmm. Some states say that, no, you can't make a deal. That deal has to go, you know, it has to be the judge that does the sentencing. Ah. And what will but the happen— the prosecutor could ask for something. Right, right. The prosecutor will say, look, we do this crap all day long. It's rubber stamp time, um, and whatever we recommend, we get. And mm, okay. you, you sign here. This is what I'll recommend, and you know, blah blah blah. And then they have to keep it under wraps until yep. the the hearing. And likely okay. they will do what they say they're going to do in that uh, circumstance. Now, what the judge chooses to do, as the the profile of the case increases, like you know, Adams is a you know reasonably high profile case. Yep. I think the likelihood of a deviation one way or the other. Uh, probably on the high side, um, it, you know, becomes more likely. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, maybe there is a, a deal that we don't know about, and maybe he can't talk about. So. Yeah, I wonder, though, I would love to see what sort of trial would come of this if he were to take it to trial, make a case before a jury. Do you think that people would be sympathetic to him in his case for guns and hallucinogens? Seems li- not likely. I mean, generally, it, even if you just have hallucinogens, it's going to be tough to probably make, make a case, but... To have guns with hallucinogens is going to create visions in people's minds of some doped up crazy person shooting up uh, school children. Or yeah, I'm just saying, like if that. you're going to get this 15 year sentence anyway, I mean, why not make a, a public news story about it instead of having it be a story about a conviction? At least it could be several weeks of a trial or something. You know? I would. Put I don't think he's going to get the 15 there. years at all. Okay. I don't think he's going to get anywhere near that. But I'll I bet you not. he spends time in jail. Just a guess. I hope not. I bet you he does. And uh, I I also hope not. I mean, I think that Kokesh is a good guy. And I know there are some paranoid folks out there who think he's an agent provocateur working for the state. I don't don't, think so. You lived with him, Derek J. Yeah, I lived with him, and I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I think that he just made a mistake. I think it was a tactical error to do a gun protest in Washington, D.C. It seems like one of the worst places to do something like that. And I would like to just put this invitation out there. To anyone who, like Adam Kokesh, believes that gun rights is an important issue, and self-defense is an important issue, and it should be something that people are willing to take action on, and I think he's heroic for being willing to do civil disobedience on an issue like this. It's just that doing it in Washington, D.C., it's like a suicide run. 
some of the best gun activism that I've seen that really inspired me was some of the stuff I've seen here in New Hampshire, where there are groups who do litter pickups while open carrying firearms. Now, in New Hampshire, it's not too strange to see someone open carrying a firearm. It's not an everyday occurrence for me. But you go to Fest, you're going to see it a lot. It doesn't freak the, out the average local in New Hampshire to see someone wearing Unless a gun. Unless they're from Massachusetts or well, something yeah, like that. Yeah, sometimes if you're close to the border, it will freak someone out. But the point is the same. Locals are seeing other people carrying guns and doing something they recognize as good behavior, cleaning up litter, being a great part of the community, a contributor. And that's the kind of activism I'd like to see because it inspires people who are regular folks who might not want to wear a gun. And they start to change their mind and say, that guy's not so scary. I might actually want to call him over, have a, have a drink or uh, enjoy some dinner, share ideas. I think that's a great point. I mean, that is really positive gun rights activism, unlike what Adam did in D.C., unlike the Chipotle incident from a few weeks ago with mm -hmm. these Fools going into Chipotle with uh, with rifles and then manhandling them, you know, hand actually burying them in their arms while they're in the restaurant. This just seemed like one of the worst ideas. So, yeah, I totally agree. New Hampshire is the place for gun rights activism, if for no other reason than the fact that not only are people more accepting of open carry and things like that here, it's also legal. So you don't have to. There's no fight to be had at this point, like in D.C., You've got a huge road ahead of you if you want to try to restore some level of respect to the right to defend yourself with a firearm in that city. You're talking about millions uh, upon millions of dollars and, and countless hours of time to even scratch the surface, which I don't think you're going to do. Yeah, here he is, his only crime being having a gun in D.C. And then there I was committing five different crimes for which I was arrested, all, oftentimes while carrying a gun in New Hampshire, and the cops yep. never had a problem with it. They no. had a problem with the smoking pot, the problem with the, having a dance party, but wearing a gun, that never concerned them. Yeah, I remember I've been able to actually co to take... I guess, custody, if you will, of a firearm from an arrested activist more than once in my time up here. It's like in a lot of places, if you get arrested with a firearm, they're going to confiscate that thing. But here in New Hampshire, it's like the cops don't want to deal with it. Uh, with uh, Anarcho Jesse, when he did his Outlaw Gardener episode, he brought a rifle along with him. When he was being arrested, I uh, you know, said to Lieutenant Maxfield, hey, do you want me to take care of that? And he said, yeah. So I picked up the rifle from off the tree, walked away with it. <laughs> and wow. then one time when, when, uh, when Rich Paul was being arrested, yeah. he uh, had a gun on him, and he talked to the officer who was arresting him, and he put the gun in his backpack and was able to hand the backpack off to me before he got arrested so uh it was just an you know amazing things that just can't happen in other places so if you care about gun rights or any weapon self-defense rights physically move to new hampshire and help defend those rights here because we already have them they're they're pretty firmly established even the democrats a lot of them own guns in new hampshire gun rights in new hampshire are fairly good they're fairly solid so why bother spending the time and effort trying to change it in dc it just it i love adam pointless. kokesh i hope this works out for him i hope you know he spends three to six months or something like that worst case but we don't know and we'll keep an eye on the the situation as it uh, continues to develop all he can do is hope yep and uh, i hope he gets to new hampshire one of these days but instead of moving and when he left dc he went to la so from one big government pit into another we're done for tonight, but you can join us online in the meantime and join Derek over at peacenewsnow.com and don't forget freetalklive.com between now and tomorrow night when we'll talk to you again. Today, what if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media